Good evening and welcome to the Smyrna Town Council August uh, meeting. And before we move into our meeting agenda tonight, um, we do have one person under citizens' comments who is Matt Ford. Matt, are you here? If you'll come forward and if you will um, just give us your address and then you have three minutes to address the council. Um, my address is uh, 203 Todd Lane. Great. Right. <coughs> Hi, my name is Matt Ford. I'm the husband of Allie Ford. I'm the father of three beautiful boys, Matthias, Valor, and Ezra. I'm the son of R.C. Ford and Callie Ford, and I'm a member of Solomon's Porch Christian Community. And I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I have one message. Jesus is the King. I want to ask you, my honorable civil magistrates, if you would join me and honor the King by making an amendment to our city charter. And I plead with you, it is the utmost importance to surrender our city to Jesus Christ, recognizing his authority in our city. And we can do this by a religious test for our civil magistrates. As a test, it would look, it would look something like this. And I'll summarize here, but I, I have one written out if you would like one. That no person who shall deny the being of God or the truth of Jesus Christ as laid out in sacred scriptures shall be capable of holding any office or a place of any trust in the civil department within the city of Smyrna. Some of our founding fathers, not all but some, they did know the importance of acknowledging the crown rights of Jesus Christ in public documents. Nine of the 13 original colonies had a religious test for anyone who would hold a public office. They believed it was impossible for someone to hold an office of honor and deal honorably without being a disciple of the one from whom honor comes. North Carolina, the colony from which we came, they had a religious test. And I am afraid and heartbroken that Tennessee and the town of Smyrna has backslid. We've all heard of the NRA, the Gun Association. Well, there is another NRA. They were founded in 1864, and they spoke to President Lincoln. They spoke to him two times, and on his second time, he, he told them, I wholeheartedly agree with you <clears throat> from what I have observed. And he observed something from the very first meeting. The first meeting, they asked him two things. They said, will you abolish slavery in the U.S.? And the second one, will you make an amendment to the Constitution of the United States acknowledging the sovereignty of Jesus Christ as king? And he said that he made it his aim to secure their first request on his first term. And he will do so on his second term to secure their second request. This is a lost concept. We have been taught separation of church and state, but that is a half-truth. There is separation, but only in sphere, not in morality. There are not two laws, because there is not two gods. There is one God. There is one Lord. Do we believe that God would establish a government, but then want nothing to do with them? Then give them no laws? What Jesus Christ accomplished on this earth 2,000 years ago earned him the name above all names. His perfect life, his perfect death, his perfect resurrection. Because of this, the Father submitted all things under his feet. And by his work, he earned the name of the King of Kings. It would do us good to take heed of Psalm 2. This was written about governments and kingdoms. It addresses the people of God, but not on an individual basis, but on a national basis. Three minutes, Mayor. And I will end with this. It says, To kiss the Son, at verse 12, lest he be angry with you and perish in the way. I plead with you. I know some of you are church members, and you know this to be true. Let not our work, your work as a civil magistrate be in vain. May we kiss the sun, lest he be angry with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine down upon you. May he lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, very Mr. Ford. Much. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, just so the public understands in regards to a charter change, what. Um, a charter change entails. Can you address that a little bit? Well, a, a charter change in general, uh, obviously, is a legislative action. But the the mechanism, unless I skip a step here, would be uh, that the council would have a two-thirds vote, uh, which would then send it to a, a referendum. Uh, then, after that referendum, it would come back to the council. I'm sorry. Yeah, back to the council, and then to the Tennessee legislature if it passes uh, two-thirds again, pa also passes the referendum. Um, obviously, the uh, uh, General Assembly would have to be in session as, as well. But uh, any charter change, that's how it would be made. Great. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions from Council? Okay. Then we will move into our meeting agenda. And Miss Diane, I'm going to let you call the roll. 
I'll call, I'm sorry. I'll call it to order, and then we're going to do prayer and pledge. It's been a little while since we've been here. I knew you looked at me funny, like, Miss okay. Diane. Um, and tonight, Rex is going to do our prayer, and uh, Mike's going to do our pledge. And if you all would stand with us, please. May we pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, <coughs> another day of life and health that you've blessed us with. Lord, we pray for clarity and for vision for the town council as they conduct the town business. Lord, I just pray that you'd be with those in our community that are sick and those that have lost loved ones, Lord, please comfort them during this time. Lord, we just pray for all of our employees. Um, watch over us, protect us, and bless us as we go about serving the citizens of this town. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Rex and Mike. Miss Diane, what about roll, roll call name? Councilman Cole? Yes, ma'am. Councilman Morrell? Present. Councilwoman Peebles? Present. Councilman Short? Here. Councilman Sullivan? Here. Vice Mayor Adkins? Here. Mayor Reed? Here. We'll move on to item three, which is approval or corrections of the minutes of the July 14th, 2020 and July 30th, 2020 meetings. Um, Jeff, are these in order? They're in order as to form, Mayor. Great. Um, any additions or corrections of these minutes? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? I move we approve the minutes. The motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes for the minutes. Um, Brian, any correspondence or communications tonight? Not this evening, Mayor. Great. Um, awards and recognitions. We do have a pro uh, proclamation for payroll week. Miss Diane, um, are you ready? All right. Great. Whereas the American Payroll Association and its more than 20,000 members have launched a nationwide public awareness campaign that pays tribute to the nearly 155 million people who work in the United States and the payroll professionals who support the American system by paying wages, reporting worker earnings, and withholding federal employment taxes. And whereas payroll professionals in Smyrna, Tennessee, play a key role in maintaining the economic health of Smyrna, carrying out such diverse tasks as paying into the unemployment insurance system, providing information for child support enforcement, and carrying out tax withholding, reporting, and depositing. And whereas payroll professionals play an increasingly important role ensuring the economic security of American families, and meet regularly with federal and state tax officials to discuss both improving compliance with government procedures and how compliance can be achieved at less cost to both government and businesses. And whereas payroll professionals have become increasingly proactive in educating both the business community and the public at large about the payroll tax withholding systems. And now, therefore, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the town of Smyrna, I do hereby proclaim the first full week in September 2020 to be payroll week and urge the citizens of this community to unite in giving additional support to the efforts of the people who work in Smyrna and of the payroll profession proclaimed this 11th day of August 2020. Thank you, Miss Diane. I don't think anybody is here to accept this great so we will get this to them but we um, appreciate that miss diane we'll move on to item six which is our consent agenda the consent agenda are items that are determined by our town man manager to be routine items if there is an item that a council member would like to pull off and um, have discussion about or vote on individually we can do that I do like to read these items to the public so you know exactly what we are voting on so um, Bear with us, it's a long, long consent agenda tonight. 
Item A is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute change order number one with Judy Construction Company relative to the wastewater treatment plan expansion project. Item B is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with ITRON relative to the AMI system implementation. Item C is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Rollins Excavating Company LLC relative to the stormwater general construction and concrete work. Item D is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute the 2019-2020 annual report relative to the, to the NPDES Phase 2 MS4 program. Item E is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract addendum with Jones Brothers Incorporated relative to providing topsoil hauled, placed, and compacted for the firing range. Item F is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a performance license agreement with Global Music Rights relative to the music at town events. Item G is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Cummins Incorporated relative to the fire department generator maintenance. Item H is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding with Motlow State Community College relative to the emergency medical responder refresher training for the fire department. Item I is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a professional services agreement with Boozer and Associates relative to the appraisals and review service for the Sam Ridley and Weekly Lane water line project. Item J is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with the Regional Transportation Authority, better known as the RTA, for the 2020-21 year. Item K is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Flock Safety relative to the license plate recognition cameras for the police department. Item L is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Barge Design Solutions relative to the professional services for the Lee Victory Recreational Park Entrance Road. Item M is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Reagan Smith Associates Incorporated relative to the design and CEI services for the Lowry Street Phase 2 project. And item N is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a CEI supplement with Neil Schaefer relative to the Enon Springs West Extension project. Is there an item that council would like to pull off and have discussion about individually? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Make motion be approved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. We'll now move on to item seven, our old business. Tonight we have four public hearings. Our first um, public hearing is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 49. Parcel 3.01 and tax map 34, parcel 50.00 to go from R1 to C2. This is requested by St. Luke's Catholic Church. The properties contain 14.6 acres and 5.4 acres respectively and are located at 10682 and 10768 Old Nashville Highway and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mary and Council, this is, uh, as you said, a second reading. It's two parcels of land. Uh, they total uh, almost exactly 20 acres. Uh, have been requested to be rezoned to C2 from R1. Uh, there is, uh, of course, there is a, a church already here on these uh, tracks, and they are, uh, they're not looking to do anything other than they want to add some additional signage, and the, the rules for commercial districts are different from residential districts. Uh, but overall, as, as well with the just the development plan in that area, the, the adjoining property is C2, and you have this PCD across the street. Um, and there's quite a bit of room between, there's an electrical easement through the property between there and the, uh, the adjoining residential. There's quite a bit of buffering there as well. So uh, I do feel like this is a fit for that area, and the Planning Commission did review it and did recommend approval unanimously. And I would also recommend it to you. Questions for Kevin on this? Okay, seeing no questions for Kevin, then I will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. And Miss Diane, you may have to tell me if somebody's coming from the lobby. Nobody. Nope. Nobody. Okay. Then I will close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. I move we approve. A motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 
Our next public hearing is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 28G, Group A, parcel 1.00 to go from R4 to C2. It's requested by Springhouse Worship and Art Center. The property contains approximately 5.91 acres and is located at 14119 Old Nashville Highway, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, this is a, a very similar request for very similar reasons. Uh, this is at the corner of Old Nashville Highway and, and Rock Springs Road. Uh, Laney's plan would support commercial development here. Um, surrounding zoning is a mix of C2 and C4. There's a small portion of R4 remaining that's uh, an adjoining, kind of goes with an adjoining property that will most likely get rezoned at some point, but not at this time. Um, again, the Planning Commission did review this to recommend <coughs> approval unanimously, and I would also recommend it. Questions or comments for Kevin? Seeing none, we will go to the public to see if anyone here to speak for or against. Nope. Anyone here? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Move to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. <coughs> Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now go on to our third public hearing, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to amending the existing PRD for property located on tax map 34, part of parcel 52.04, requested by Laws Bolden. The property contains approximately 8.5 acres and is located on Legacy Drive, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is an existing uh, approved PRD uh, that is, uh, was approved some time ago. That is for uh, 52 townhouses, and this uh, they uh, re are requested, I'm sorry, uh, changes. Uh, there's about four items that they did request and, and Planning Commission did review. Uh, one, they would be changing the uh, proposed architectural <laughs> elevations, but the required materials of, of brick, hardy, and stone would remain. Uh, the minimum building square footage would be reduced from, from 1,700 to 1,657. Uh, all bedrooms will be upstairs instead of a master bedroom downstairs, and all units will have a two-car garage instead of a mix of one and two car garages. All other uh, provisions of the original approved PRD would remain in place, including um, buffering in the adjoining uh, single family residential areas and things like that. Uh, the Planning Commission did uh, recommend approval of this unanimously, and I would also recommend it. Questions for Kevin? We've had discussion about this a couple times, but anything new? This just really replaced another one that was already there and it added more garage space and so forth so okay since it is a public hearing i'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item nobody outside, nobody outside? then i will close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion we approve a motion do we have a second second motion and a second any discussion all in favor say aye uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our last public hearing tonight is a consideration of an ordinance relative to amending the existing PUD for properties located on tax map 28F, Group A, parcels 29.01 and 47.06. It's requested by Stephen and Leisha Burkett. The properties contain approximately 23.61 acres and are located at 729 Rock Springs Road, and this is a second reading. Kevin? Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, this is, uh, as you said, it is a, an existing PUD that has been requested to be amended. Uh, surrounding zoning is a mix of R3 and R6, and a land use plan would support a medium density single family development in this area. Uh, the approved PUD allows for residential use of the existing single family house uh, that is on the property, um, as well as a photography studio and a church. The original PUD approval was for the residential and the photography studio. Uh, a few years later, a church was added, uh, but never built. Uh, and now this would be the next amendment that has been requested uh, for this one. Um, they want to add uh, three different uses, uh, wedding slash event venue, an airsoft course, and then a livestock or agricultural use. Uh, access would be from the existing entrance that's already in place on Rock Springs Road. Uh, the proposed event venue is to be utilize the existing barn on site that will be remodeled into an open air pavilion. The airsoft course will be located behind uh, the, the house, the existing house there, and the livestock slash agriculture use will be in the open area uh, south of uh, Southwoods Drive. The 
fire department has expressed concerns about accessing structures due to the driveway uh, and the bridge on the property being inadequate for the fire equipment to utilize. Uh, a fire hydrant would need to be added within 400 feet of the wedding or event venue, uh, and the parking area would be required to be a paved surface and, and not gravel. Um, I did attach the, the letter and what the applicant submitted uh, for this request. Um, the applicant did submit some additional pictures uh, that are kind of a part of this presentation that he can utilize when he comes to speak on the public hearing. I'll let him go through those and explain those to you. I know that's something that you all had asked for, and so uh, he did try to respond in that way. Um, the Planning Commission uh, did recommend approval of this request, and with the conditions with regards to addressing all the fire issues and those things, I would also recommend it to you. Um, question about the bridge. Mm -hmm. That'll have to be addressed. That will have to be addressed, absolutely. Okay. okay. Questions or comments from council before we move to the public hearing? Anything? Okay. Uh, then. I mean, yeah. So I was contacted by Mr. Burkett. Um, he was, uh, he did mention that he didn't know, um, he felt like the pavement was adding additional burden that wasn't there before so I mean, he may speak to that but I just consider that he, that was one thing that he uh, had asked that uh, is there any way there's some, le some leniency there since it was already approved as a church and didn't require pavement to be a church but now it's going to require pavement it's just additional cost that is going to add to his whole project so I'm assuming he'll mention it when he comes well, and I can address the church issue the church was going to first off when the church was approved it was going to be on the north side of the property so the bridge would not have been an issue for the church because they would yeah not, not the prepared. bridge as much as the pavement but but, but I, I didn't want to okay. bring that up too but yeah and they were gonna uh, they were gonna meet our requirements for parking as far as pavement okay good so they were gonna do that okay but they obviously they never built that was their plan so it was a requirement of the PUD prior to yes. okay good yes okay thank you other questions or comments before we move to the public hearing anything else Kevin coming from people around there. We, yeah, we had several phone calls still. Since uh, then? Yeah. Since the last meeting? Since the last meeting. I haven't personally talked to them. My, uh, my staff talked to them from Maryland. I think maybe some in administration may have had some calls as well. But, but uh, most of the calls we have had have been more concerns. Uh, most recent calls have been more about the, the agricultural piece of this, more so than the other two issues. And most of the calls you got, are, I assume, are against? They, they, they were The ones they have called us have been against, yes. Okay against the agricultural piece mostly? Primarily, that's the most recent calls. We've had some calls about the uh, the other parts of it as well, but more recently it's been more on the agricultural part of it. Okay, anything else for Kevin? Questions or comments? Okay, then I will go to the public for um, the public hearing. If there's anyone here to speak for or against this item, Okay, uh, anyway. hey, if you will um, come forward and state your name and address, that would be great. Yes. My name is Steve Burkett, and my address is 729 Rock Springs Road. Go ahead. I just have a short statement and a couple of supporters, uh, friends who are in support of this. So. The property at 729 Rock Springs Road was settled in the 1840s by Mr. Reinhardt, after whom Hart's Branch takes its name. The Reinhardt Cemetery is still located on the property. It was later acquired by George Washington Gwynn. He built the first two-room house there in 1886. Later added a two-story addition in 1890. <clears throat> Mr. Gwynn hosted religious conventions on the grounds greeted thirsty travelers of Nashville Highway at the spring, which bears his name. The highway has moved west, but the spring remains, issuing thousands of gallons of cold, clear water daily. The house still stands, and we are its cur current residents. Presently, it sits on approximately 24 acres. Behind and directly south of the house is a park-like setting of four to five acres. We believe it is a suitable place for weddings, reunions, memorials, etc. Uh, the, the grounds have been used in the past extensively for photography <coughs> and portraits. We intend to utilize existing structures like the barn and other surviving buildings. 
We'll also employ uh, porter johns and catering for uh, wedding events and so forth. To the east, there's approximately seven acres of pasture. <clears throat> We'd like to fence that in. We believe there's plenty of room to create a buffer between property lines and a fence for livestock. We could create 50 feet, uh, which should uh, relieve any pressure uh, against the neighbors to the north. Um, and also, uh, we might grow pumpkins or corn or sunflowers or something like that. Finally, we would like to include a small area of one to two acres uh, further south across the water feature. It's densely wooded um, and uh, put an airsoft site possibly um, over well over 300 feet from any property line. Um, I know there are several things that we're including here, but we look at it as an opportunity to be diverse with the property because it offers um, several opportunities and uh, we'd like to pursue those uh, because it is a farm and we're looking for multiple ways of creating a revenue stream there okay. so questions <clears throat> do you still plan on building the church no sir i never intended on building a church this is this, these items are added to this uh, uh development it doesn't say that well, we, is it? Excuse me. Well, our, our paperwork says that these that they're they're adding these events to this. It mm -hmm. doesn't say that the church is, is uh, um, going away or anything. We did simply didn't want to remove any existing um, zoning and, uh, and amendments or what already previously existed from the uh, approval. Understand. Anything else? Uh, quick question. The wedding and event venue, what type of building would be utilized for that? There's a barn, existing okay. barn. We'd like to create a pavilion out of it. Okay. Other questions? Are you, I know you said that you'd like to be able to, for it to be diversified with several things in there. Do you have any plans for anything else or is this specifically exactly what you want to put in there? Um, these are the ideas. I have a large family, and these are ideas proffered by several members of the family. The primary idea is a wedding venue. Okay. Uh, the, the seven acres is sitting there <clears throat> unused. We've cut it for hay, uh, but it can easily be utilized for cattle, like cattle are, are grazing down Rock Springs Road or over on Old Nashville Highway. There, there are other uh, large tracks with, with livestock on them. This is a, <clears throat> a sub-irrigated plot and uh, ideal for that purpose. So that's, uh, and, and then the woods, they're unimproved and we're simply trying to be creative about ways to utilize it. And, and, and Mr. Barrett, I just the reason I ask is a lot of times when we see things come before us, we can look at a map and we can say, okay, this is gonna be down here, this is gonna be over in the, over in the corner and that type of thing. And, so not knowing that. Could we show the pictures? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So this is the house. We'd like to call the, uh, the place the Sycamore. Okay, can you hold it right there? You'll see that there's a slightly open area on the lower track. Right there is approximately there is where we'd like to put an airsoft site. And again, we're talking about maybe one acre. And then you see the pasture to the north mm -hmm. of it. Uh, as I said, we could uh, fence uh, well off of the property line if the neighbors are concerned about the livestock being too close. Um, uh, the other three sides uh, shouldn't present a problem. And um, of course, uh, next picture, please. That's the bridge in question. Um, it's ideal for photography, which uh, this place used to be Michael's photography, and he had it built. It's made of steel. It has concrete in it. Uh, it had dump trucks full of gravel go across it to deliver the gravel that's on that parking lot. That's 70, over 70,000 pounds worth of gravel and gross weight. Next picture. That's the barn, and that's the general area 
that uh, we'd like to use as a wedding venue. That's a view from the back of the house of that area that we want to utilize for the wedding venue. It's a view from the area towards the house. That's the barn at the back of the house. Next picture. That's why we want to call it the Sycamore. There are several like that on the property. They're old and mature. They may have been there when the house was built. Next picture. That's the pasture area. And that's a general outline of what I'd like to fence. That's what we recently cut off of it. And I believe that's the last picture. That's a close up of the airsoft set. Other questions or comments? Mr. Burkett, have you had any yes, conversation with any of your neighbors personally? I have a neighbor here who, who can speak okay. if you'd like me to. I just didn't know if you'd had an opportunity to speak with them and tell them your, your plan. I've spoken with some neighbors. I have many neighbors. I don't have one on You do have side. many neighbors. I have dozens, literally. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Other? Um, Go ahead. Yeah. For the wedding and event venue, and this may be a follow-up to Kevin, are the only facilities, uh, as far as bathroom facilities, or it's, it would be porta johns that are being brought in, or are there, are there anything else? Um, porta johns that we're talking about are those that have ru uh, running water and, and wash basins and uh, the toilets. They have hot water. They're not. They're not uh, simply cubicles. And they're used quite extensively in this in this business and for this purpose. So yes, that would be it. We don't intend to bring people in the house. Okay, Kevin, is that sufficient as far as our our ordinances are concerned? As far as a <coughs> event venue, or does it make a difference because it's more of an open type? Um, I would probably have to defer to, to Steve Smith and Building Code, and I don't know if he's here tonight. So I, that's that's really not a zoning issue. That's really more of a building code issue. And I don't really so it would be something we could make sure we addressed sure. if approved or make it a condition sure. if we were so inclined to approve that it meets codes in that respect. Right. Other questions or comments? Thank you very much. And if you will come forward and if you will state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Kirk Whitworth. I own a property at 722 Mason Tucker, which is probably 200 yards from this property. Uh, I'm absolutely for them being able to use this for that, you know, for the purposes they want to. My understanding as far as the pavement, that's been a... Uh, commercial professional photo studio for the last almost two decades. And my understanding, different times, there's 50, 100 cars a day go up and down the driveway on that pavement that's existing and still looks great today. As far as the bridge, y'all had mentioned something about the bridge. They built that primarily for looks because there's no water in there in the distance between the, 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 the existing terrain around there and the bottom of what you would call a river is about this far and it's all rock. So I mean, you can drive right up to the, you can drive right up to the house. So Michael Weems that had the photo studio built that quote bridge <laughs> for looks, not because you're crossing over some creek or some big thing of water. If it rains real big, the water will get, you know, so deep for, I used to live on the property. I have no vested interest in it. I don't own it. I'm not a partner. I'm not in this. You know, I'm a neighbor, and I used to live at the property, but the water gets about this deep in a little deal for an hour or two, and it's gone. And so, I mean, you could drive a vehicle or a fire truck across at any point under any conditions. And so the bridge, you guys were talking about that, is a, is a cosmetic thing, and the road's been used for two decades, and it's still standing up fine. I think it'd be great for our city. I think it'll bring people here. They'll go to restaurants. They'll go to do stuff, and people can have a wedding there and get married. 
I mean, it's been used for hundreds of people to go out there and take pictures. It seems like a couple sure ought to be able to go out there and get married in a beautiful place that's historic, built in the 1880s. It's got a lot of history. The house is really historic. It's really cool. It's really almost completely renovated. Big, nice staircases going up with a guest home, stone guest home. The largest spring in Middle Tennessee that I'm aware of, Blue Springs, is a huge spring that actually starts you know, starts a river right there on the property. It's crystal clear. It's just a beautiful place that they could take advantage of. It would be a fantastic place for people to get married and, and start their life. So I guess that's, I just thought I'd throw those things out. I hope it's helpful. And uh, I don't have any vested interest other than I think it'd be great for our city. And I think it'd Thank be a good Thank you, Mr. Thing. Whitworth. Any questions for Mr. Whitworth? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. If you'll state your name and address for us. Uh, my name is Kim Tompkins, and I live at 414 Robertson Drive. And I'm in support of this. I've been a business owner here in Smyrna for 20 years. Um, actually, a hair salon. So venues of this sort uh, have always been a, an issue for brides. Where can we get married? Where can we hold outdoor events? Um, the fact that it's so convenient and private and secluded and beautiful. I know events have been held at um, the Sam Davis home. But we do need a nice alternative, and so I'm in support of it for those reasons. And it's a good family. I'd like to okay. see them succeed. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Ms. Tompkins. Anyone else? Hi. If you'll state your name and address, please. Certainly. I'm Lynn Cutler. I live at 101 McNichol, Corner McNichol in Hazelwood. I've known this family, I guess, 20 years. And I'm a designer and I look at the aesthetics of things all the time, but I also have been in Smyrna since I was nine. My dad was a pilot. We were at the base and I've watched the evolution of this town over the years, which just frankly boggles my mind. My mother would say, don't ever sell the house, and I'm thinking, why would I ever want to go back to Smyrna? <laughs> and then I did to take care of her and I've been here since 94. And the thing that I love um, about what they've done aesthetically is they've taken a fabulous old house that's a part of Smyrna history. I mean, we're so proud of the Sam Davis home. There's been so much energy and money poured into that, and these people have taken their own funds and done it. And it's just a respectful thing, you know, that I just really appreciate. Um, and I, it is so, there's so much room there. I cannot imagine that it would cause any issues with neighbors, but, you know, everybody has a right to speak up about that. Um, I do think it would add a lot. I have clients that are have asked about venues in Smyrna, people that want to, people are fascinated by how this town has evolved. And I'd like to see that continue. I'd like to support them any way I can. Great. Thank Thanks, you so Ms. Much. Keller. Anyone else to speak for or against this item? I may have one other person. Is there anybody? No. Okay. Then I will close the public hearing. Um, Kevin, quick question before we move for a motion. If they wanted to add anything else other than what they've talked about because it's a PUD, are they going to have to bring it back to us? Yes. Okay. Um, in regards to Steve Smith and Chief with the bridge and, and that sort of thing, tell me what the process is with that. Uh, the process would be, if you all choose to approve this tonight, is, is they would be required to bring a site plan that we would review, uh, if we can go to the Planning Commission, certainly. Uh, and we would evaluate all those things, and if there's with the bridge, with the parking, with, with the water line, and any other issues that would come up, just like we would on any, any site. So they would have to be required to meet uh, the requirements of the zoning, which just would be in place on this property. Okay. Council, any other questions? Kevin, I've got one. Kevin? In regards to Mr. Burke's comment about whether the neighbors that have called in had some concern about the livestock portion of this, Mr. Burke had had a solution for that as far as fencing inside and not getting up against their property. Is that something we would decide when the site plan comes in as far as where that fence is designated to go, or was that how is that handled? Um, I mean, I think it could be handled that way. I think it's fine if he's committing to, to 50 feet, if you all are comfortable with 50 feet. I think 50 feet is, uh, he is required under the municipal code to mow 50 feet. 
to keep it mowed and so you don't have so if you have a hay field or whatever you still have to 50 feet around the residential over five acres you can allow your plots to grow um, and so Kevin what does our zoning say about a minimum requirement for agricultural uses we don't have I mean we have a five acre requirement uh, for purposes of allowing for livestock obviously this is almost 24 uh, so that that is uh, that's actually I believe in the municipal code not the zoning ordinance uh, we allow by right agriculture uses allowed by right in R1 and zoning um, so it's which is most of the, the larger undeveloped tracks are still R1 and we do have agricultural uses on them around town certainly uh, but they do have to have uh, do have to have that or keep the area around where they border residential areas they do have to have the 50 feet area that they keep mowed uh, like they would a lawn just to keep animals from getting into the adjoining neighbors that maybe they don't want to see so. Kevin remind me it was just a couple of months ago I think we had a gentleman come in here and wanting to change his barn size because he bordered a residential neighborhood. You recall how big that farm was? Was it 15 acres? Talking about the, where he was wanting it's to over do off Rock, Yeah, I think it was over off Rock Springs somewhere. Um, I don't remember that one. He bordered the, uh, the development that was coming in over there by the old Stitcher's Playhouse, I think. But that's yes. the one we had to change the, we, we changed, we changed we, the that, ordinance. That is true. Yeah. We went yeah. up to 2400 for 1500 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, uh, yeah. But that he, for, the size for, of his property, he was he was running was, cattle. Yeah, that was in the ordinance. That, uh, we changed the ordinance to allow for larger barns. Right. Basically, if you have 15 acres or but more. But did he was he running livestock house. on that property? And how big was that property? Do you recall? I don't recall exactly. I know it was larger than 15 acres. It is in the green belt. Okay. I, don't know, but I, don't I couldn't exactly remember. Acres. You know, when we saw this at planning, one of the things I'll, I'll just inject it here. Uh, I kind of thought it's a little bit refreshing to maintain some green space in town here and and uh, be able to allow a small business person to be able to operate a business that I uh, heard the comment from the nice lady in the back there about wedding venues and things and uh, we had one before that didn't fit because of ingress and egress. This has a little more of a fit than that one did in my opinion but I know Chief's got some concerns and that's been voiced. Planning Commission made sure that we we levied those restrictions upon any kind of approval and we did that as I recall so um, there's a lot of acreage there my concern would be like anybody else's with the with the neighbors having concern I'd want to address that in some way that 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 fencing can protect them and the buffering can protect them uh, there's a lot of natural buffering out there as well but as far as the restrictions placed on uh, Mr. Burkett and his wife to do the things that to bring it up to city standards and the restrictions with the the bridge and the things that have been discussed the paving i think that still needs to be in place and i hate to put that burden on a small uh, business owner but we've done that in every other case where it was required and i just don't think we need to waver from that other questions i find it um i don't know it's kind of like a little of this and a little of that and and, and i guess i'd like to see plans which because this is a, a a pud i'd like to see definite plans on exactly where these things are going to be and how they're going to fit in there and and where they'll uh, uh because just throwing it out there as it is we have no idea of the impact that it's going to have on the neighbors and and as mentioned there is a lot of neighbors there that uh, could be impacted this and um i don't know it's just uh um, like I said, for it coming in under a plan development, I would like to see a more finite uh, plan on it. Other is, comments? Is that traditionally addressed at site? In other words, we're, we're approving the rezoning requests with these allowed usages uh, or usage on this land, and then it's up to planning at that point to work through the site as far as layout and restrictions requirements and things such as that this, this type of boat has happened quite a bit when you've had because when this one started with the, with the photography studios 
it wasn't quite two decades ago, but it was several years ago. Uh, I was here then too. Uh, and it's approaching two decades ago because my son was very young. Uh, but so I mean, we've had other situations like that where we've had residential tracks and someone wants to do something a little different with. We're not comfortable with commercial zoning on the property, certainly. But what they're wanting to do makes some sense. Stitcher's Playhouse that we've mentioned, <laughs> just got mentioned in, as an aside, was one of those. Uh, this was one of them, again, starting with the, the photography studio originally. Uh, so, I mean, it is somewhat typical in those kind of situations. Uh, if it's a large scale, you know, like the next item on your agenda, the large scale PRD, you usually do have more details on that because there's a lot more to think about and deal with and address. Um, so, I mean, I guess it, a yes and no is the answer to the question. You know, let me refer to that question there. I think I have kind of been. Um, accused of not trusting the Planning Commission to work the details out as they need to be worked out. And I just want to say that that is not what my concerns are in any shape, form, or fashion. Where my concerns come in is that I've seen many items that come before council and nothing come to fruition on it for an amount of time later on. And the Planning Commission has turned over, changed, and we don't get a, pl a, a product like we were presented with on the first go. Planning Commission changes just like a council changes. And these, um, the more finite of a plan we get, the more uh, finite of a product we're going to end up with. Uh, I mean, you know, just in the last month, we've seen the Planning Commission change two members. And if this is five, six, seven, eight years down the road somewhere, we could have a completely different planning commission, completely different council, and then we've got a, a, a um, development out here that um, uh, could could be a whole lot of things. I mean, the whole thing could end up being an airsoft course. The whole thing could end up being a farm. The whole thing could end up being a wedding venue or, or whatever. But um, like I say, it's just a matter of a... And, and I've been a, accused of being a control freak before too and um, uh, there are times when I feel like that's my elected obligation to make sure that what comes out on the other side is something which does um, enhance the neighborhood which with uh, surrounding it and, 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 and absolutely nothing against you sir nothing whatsoever um, it's just that this this could go any which way so I had my say Thank you. If there were more detailed plans of showing on the maps where he wants the Absolutely. areas and stuff, could you get to a, a better well, comfort and, level? And, and I guess, you know, um, if we're going to do that, then um, if we're not going to do the church, we're not going to do the photography studio, why do we have those in here anymore? I mean, to, in, in, in my opinion, those should be eliminated if that's not a part of the future plan. Kevin, do you want to comment to that in well, regards I mean, to if it's not going to be in the PUD, does I mean, it need to be in there? I think it's, I'm okay with this thing because it is, yeah, I think it's, it was approved and we were okay with it being there. For the council, as I say, we, the council at that time was okay with those two uses being on this property. Uh, and within the parameters that those PUDs were originally approved, having a photography studio there again or having a, a church be built there with the same ideas that were approved before I think would fit the property so um, I mean I'm okay with them saying that's but I'm if Mr. Burkett's is okay with removing them as his property I don't want to speak for him but, um, so with multiple venues if there's multiple things that have to be addressed in regards to codes or whatever if he can't get one part of it up to codes does that mean that part just goes away but the rest is okay sure I mean, okay yeah, if, he, if he can make the event venue work but there's an issue with, with some of the other issues i mean yeah that would certainly yeah that would just be all he could do is what he could meet our requirements for, for doing okay but okay. we're here tonight re-looking at this pud from what was originally approved by a prior council and planning commission because there's been a change to it correct 
other comments or questions? Do I um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to deny. <clears throat> Have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second to deny. Miss Diane, I think you probably need to call the roll for this. And this is a motion to deny. Councilman Cole? Yes. Councilman Morrell? No. Councilwoman Peebles? No. Councilman Short? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? No. Vice Mayor Atkins? No. Mayor Reed. No. So, um, I make mo a motion that we approve the request um, as outlined with the stipulations that planning is put together. I have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion. What are those stipulations we're talking about? Certainly the fire, uh, fire department having a comfort level with access to the site. Uh, with the bridge and any, and any other issues that, that could be fire hydrant within 400 feet of the event the wedding event venue parking area uh, being a paved surface not gravel and certainly just it goes without saying they would have to meet all the building code requirements with regards to bathrooms and those kind of things um what in regards to time that events would allow to take place <coughs> up till what time with there being neighbors and that sort of things with our noise ordinance of course we have a noise ordinance already right um, the planning commission we did not look at limiting the hours um, i mean it's, they, they would have to be abided by our noise ordinance so and i'm going to be honest i can't off the top of my head remember the noise ordinance 10 i think it's later than that i thought i thought it was 11. i think that's why we turn off the lights and shut down the park at the rec park, right? Because 11 p.m. is the time. Is that right, Mike? I don't think it's about the noise or anything. It's mostly just the park out. Okay. I, I thought that was the reason that we tried to shut down lights and stuff. Was we knew for the neighbors. That's just kind okay. of each park's kind of different. Okay. I don't know why that number stuck with me on the last one we looked at. Um, Probably because they visited you because you were being too noisy probably. at your house. No, that, that was nowhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we do, we do have a... Uh, Construction time. There's construction time, yeah, but I, I, I don't recall it. I mean, the noise ordinance is really a 24-7. They'd have to meet the noise ordinance. I guess here's my concern. If there's weddings or parties or events and they've got live bands or anything else, if I was their neighbor, that would... I'd want to shut down I, at some point in time. And right. that's my, that's my yeah, point. And that certainly is, I mean, I think that's certainly a, a viable amendment to a to your motion that you do have a motion would be to add a that you know that no later than 9 p.m 10 p.m whatever you're comfortable with probably 10 would be the one that would make the most sense to me just from the standpoint of a night wedding would be over with at 10. at least the, the band would stop playing or the dj would stop playing at that point uh, and you know maybe it's at some point maybe i don't know if you have a start time in the morning or not certainly at, at the evening uh, Adding that as a condition of the approval, so that it's clear to everyone. Can you amend that or just add it? I guess it depends on if the first and second's okay with adding that to their motion. Are you adding 10 p.m., Steve? You made the I'm motion. okay with that. I think that fits, fits in the noise ordinance anyway, so I'm okay with adding that. And my second's fine with that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? Ms. Diane, call the roll for approval of the property, I mean, of the project with Planning Commission uh, recommendations as well as 10 p.m. Uh, and, and, and just to clarify on the 10 p.m., is that for outdoor events at the location? I just want to be specific of what that means after 10 p.m. Is it all outdoor events closed or must cease at 10 p.m. Yeah, I would think that would be adequate simply because there's residents in the area so uh, we want to be protective of them as well because if you just call it music and it ends up being fireworks right. you know what I mean so I think you have to have that in there Mr. Burkett would that kind of work for your business model 10 p.m. is fine okay. yes sir 
So I think 10 p.m. with all events, all outdoor events. Steve? For all there? events, yeah. period. Outdoor. All events, yes. Oh, okay. All outdoor. Okay. Okay. Jeff, you good? I'm good. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Ms. <coughs> Diane, call the roll. Councilman Cole, how do you vote? I'm still going now. Councilman Morrell? Yes. Councilman Peebles? Yes. Councilman Short? No. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Vice Mayor Adkins? Yes. Mayor Reed? Yes. 5-2. Thank you, Ms. Diane. Okay, um, just because we've had so much discussion on this, Kevin, can you talk a little bit about next steps for that project? The next step is <coughs> for Gail have to uh, hire someone to, to do a site plan for him and, and, and building plans and all those kind of things that have to come to codes for his, for his building. Uh, but a site plan that would show the access, utilities, paving, parking areas, where the buildings are specifically going to be going, where the airsoft course will be, the, very definitively define those things and it'll have to come back for review to staff and into the planning commission. Okay. That plan could last how long, Kevin? Just so the plan is the approval from the planning commission is good if they have to get a building permit within one year. Right, so uh, just I, I know Mr. Cole had a little concern about the changing of bodies and so forth, but if that site plan <coughs> runs out, it has to come back again. So, But from now till site plan, there is no time, is there? There, yeah, there's no time. No. So from here to site plan is right. unlimited, but from site, site plan, plan to come. correct. And it's good for a year. And when was that first plan approved? The church and the photography studio. Um, the photography studio, it was like I said, we're approaching 20 years now, um, and it came in very soon afterwards. The the plan for the church came in pretty quickly. They, that it all got approved. They just, they never acted on the construction. But, but the church was how long ago was that? Not that it matters. It's I mean, probably eight to 10 years. I don't make okay. it 10. It's probably seven or eight years or something like that. So am I correct that nothing comes back before council after this? That's Is correct. that correct? That's correct. Unless they want to amend the plan to add okay. something else. But Mark and Tim both, y'all kind of heard what our concerns are when the site plan comes to you guys. And yeah. I mean, I think I we think understand buffering and Absolutely. Police, uh, the fire chief's concerns and the hydrant, the paving, and the fencing. Those and neighbors. And neighbors. Well, we want to protect yeah. the neighbors as well. So Absolutely. if any of those are not here just listening, there's more to do here. And we're going to do our, our level best to buffer them from any concerns. Great. Okay. Um, we will now move into our new business. Our first item on the Planning Commission report tonight is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation in C2 and PRD zoning for properties located on tax map 50, parcels 1.00, 2.00, and 4.00, containing approximately 252.6 acres. It's requested by Brett Smith on behalf of Encompass Land Group. The recommendation also includes the annexation of approximately 3,400 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Rocky Fork Road. The properties are located along Rocky Fork Road southwest of I-24, and this is a first reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, uh, this annexation and zoning request is, a, is before you tonight. It has been reviewed by the Planning Commission. Uh, land use plan would support a mix of <coughs> commercial and, and office retail multifamily in this area. Uh, the surrounding zoning is a mix of R1, C2, and PRD, which is Woodmont and Wood Point in town, and RM in Rutherford County. Annexation uh, also does include, uh, as you said, approximately 3,400 linear feet of Rocky Fork Road from the current town limits uh, to the, uh, the southernmost point of the requested parcels. Uh, the town would be providing all services to this area upon annexation. And this does lie within the uh, Olive Branch sewer basin, so it's, it would be served by the Olive Branch Extension, which is, of course, a year or maybe a little bit more than a year away from actually being completed, certainly, <coughs> and looking at bidding that next month. Um, um, approximately 55 and a half acres of the 252.6 are proposed to be zoned C2. So the remaining 197.1 acres would be a PRD uh, named Greystone. 
It would, con uh, would contain 444 single family lots, 24 uh, villa units, which are uh, basically constructed like a duplex, uh, but two units in, in one building. Uh, 218 townhouses and 576 multifamily units uh, that would be a for sale condominium uh, unit uh, for a total of 1,262 units which uh, overall on the 197.1 acres is a density of 6.4 units per acre. Uh, access would be from Rocky Fork Road uh, with connections to Wood Point uh, as well as the Andrews development and Olive Branch Road which is an existing county road to the east of the site. Um, did include the proposed plan, so you all do have uh, that as well with the road layout and, and, uh, and amenities, elevations, and, and all that. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this. They did recommend approval um, with s several conditions. Uh, one, that a traffic study will be required. Uh, we had <coughs> also had some questions that we had as a staff that they did address, but weren't included with their plans themselves, and so they are included as conditions. Uh, what they label lap siding and board and batten siding will be a fiber cement product. The minimum square footage of the single family and villa units are 1,400 square feet per unit and the townhomes are 1,200 square feet per unit. Brick or stone is required as an accent material on the townhome elevations and the villa, villa units are required to at minimum match those townhome elevations as two materials. Uh, there was a couple items that did come up at the Planning Commission meeting uh, that were, uh, uh, we, we discussed them and they uh, asked, the Planning Commission asked me as, as staff to, to look into it further and, and so um, I'll cover those. Uh, first, the, uh, the Gateway Overlay District, um, we did recommend and that, they, that that be extended to this property. Uh, over the multifamily and the C2 portions uh, of the of the development, uh, the developer did request us to look at it on the townhome portion of that, um, and spent quite a bit of time this morning actually meeting with them and talking about that so I could get uh, some guidance from them what their what their concerns specifically were, and so uh, really the majority of that overlay they don't there's not a, they don't have any concerns about there's some very specific. Uh, items in the kind of in the architectural piece not the materials or anything like that but some of the details we have that we require um, and then also uh, we require there's some uh, in the overlay it is required to to that there not be more you know, only one curb cut per 100 feet of road front edge and things like that that really don't work in a townhome situation um, and then Really, just some some other again, just some details on the architectural. Again, not materials or anything like that. And after looking at it, we I, there were some of those issues that that kind of went away after I talked with them and explained to them what we were meaning and those things, and those went away. There's still a few items again, probably 90 to 95 percent of it of the overlay or no issues. Certainly, all the landscaping requirements, buffering requirements, screening, uh, the streetscaping. You know, sidewalk and pedestrian connectivity, all those things are, are signage, all those kind of things are, were not an issue. And so um, I'm comfortable with those things. I understand you all don't have that in front of you, and I apologize for that. That's, that's a kind of a late breaking thing that we just worked out today. So I can certainly get that to you. Um, but I am comfortable with what, they, what we are, I worked out with them on that issue. And again, that is only specifically to the townhome portion of this. Um, the other issue that was talked about um, that was specifically uh, kind of a condition of approval was regarding a the HVAC units and that as well as two other issues that uh, were discussed that night or have come up since then um, they are um, with regards to the HVAC units the request to have them only on or have them one side and on the rear on, on every other one or every other opposite side uh, so you would only have one between the two houses and those kind of things that's gone away they're they're going to do with the rear uh, HVAC units um, the other thing that came up at, at the meeting was regarding elevators within the condo units they are committing to elevators within the condos uh, and the other thing that did come up I know uh, not so much it came up after the meeting somewhat I know it has come up um, afterwards as well is regarding 
uh, cross connectivity in the commercial area, and they are committing to having, you know, the frontage road that connects, or backage road, or however it works out. The specific location is not worked out yet, but having that cross connectivity between the, all on those commercial parcels on both sides of Rocky Fork Road, between the townhomes and the commercial piece, as well as the, on the condo and commercial piece on that side as well. Um, so, so those I know were issues that did come up, and we worked through that with them, and, and they are uh, committing as a part of that can be a condition of your approval. Uh, certainly, if you all choose to approve this tonight by second reading, we would probably see a, have a revised plan to address some of those issues so you could see that on, on second reading, certainly. Um, we've been talking to this developer probably off and on for a year now. Uh, this proposed plan looks different, certainly, than what did the first time I saw it. Uh, we've we've, we've uh, made a lot of changes, and and, uh, and I feel like it's a, a good plan. Uh, I, I think it is consistent with our vision for for this area as a gateway into Smyrna with the future interchange that we're we're working towards getting. Uh, and, and I can I can feel uh, secure and safe in recommending this to you as, as it is consistent with our vision for that area. And I guess that's all that I have. The developer and his representation is here. If you have any questions of them as well, I'll be happy to try to answer any other questions that the council may have. Do you have the other picture? Let's see. I've got several. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Questions or comments or Mark or Tim, anything you want to add to Kevin? Um, as Kevin said, we poured through this the other night for about an hour and had a long conversation on it. Uh, my biggest takes on it, me personally, were just the fact that there's been about a year process getting trying to get this right. In addition, some of the questions I asked were, does it meet our comprehensive plan? And it does. Does the staff recommend it? You just heard. Kevin say he does. Some of the concerns that we brought up was the elevator to the condos. I think that's been addressed tonight. Uh, rear HVACs on all the, the dwellings, that's been addressed tonight. Um, the cross connectivity, I know there was some concern about that. I had the same. And so uh, that can be addressed from what Kevin's telling us. And is it consistent with the vision? I recall a meeting we had with uh, a consultant about six, seven months ago, I think, back in the, we had a meeting back there with them. And this sort of matches up ideally with what they told us we could expect to see. Now, when I made the motion to approve this the other night, I made a comment prior to that and I said, I'm gonna get it on the table. Because I know when the council gets a hold of it, they're gonna have some issues and they're gonna have some concerns. So that's why we're here. I wanted to get it here where everybody could talk about it share their opinions about it and uh, but I just answered the reasons why I think I felt compelled to put it on the table because of recommendations and the plan that it meets so well and let me say this to both of you and to you and your staff I would not want to be sitting in your shoes on the Planning Commission the number of hours that you put in studying projects the amount of time that um, you put in talking to people on the phone um, and the amount of time that you visit sites and that sort of thing and each one of us sitting up here trusts you to do that um, and so I don't want you to get the impression that we don't and that we don't appreciate the job that you both do. That also goes for staff as well. I know sometimes when um, when we make quick decisions within an hour's time period that we're in a meeting, y'all have been going at it for a year, like you say. So I don't want anybody to think that we don't appreciate the time that it takes to bring projects like these to us. But I do think each one of us that were elected up here um, represent 50,000 people. I agree. And this project for me is one that is probably one of the biggest projects that we will make a decision on because um, it's out where we hope to get the interchange. 
and we will only get one shot at this. And I know that's the case with most projects, but I doubt there will ever be another shot at another interchange on 24 for us. So I just want to make sure we do our due diligence as council members in, um, in making that decision. Well, there's the whole reason why I said I'm going to send it up to the council the other night. Absolutely. And let this be surveyed by them. Right. So, yeah. Right. So I just wanted you two to know that, and I wanted, um, and I wanted staff to know that as well. So. Kevin, I, I have two questions, maybe, maybe concerns. It depends on the answers, I guess. Um, on the right side, if we're looking at the picture, the black box where it is not being annexed, right. Um, right, that that piece is excluded. Yeah. Um, when we talked about previous product at this intersection, you provided us an overlay showing that intersection or that interchange potentially moving further south if we if if we elected or if the state elected to straighten Rocky Fork out. I'm concerned that the, I guess it's the apartments, townhomes, whatever they are in the bottom right corner there would end up being really close to that intersection or that interchange if the interchange did move south. If that, if we, if we elected to straighten that road, it's going to be really close to the corner of those, that it, building. Yeah, it will be close to those. I mean, I think we're, we're still okay, but it will be closer. Yes, absolutely. And so that, south, yeah. So that leads to my next question is, when I'm looking at interchanges around Middle Tennessee right now, um, we kind of have a tendency to develop a couple of different options. We have places like Amelville Road or Walden Road where residential apartments and townhomes and some commercial are kind of tight around the intersection. And then we have places like Salem Road and even Sam Ridley where the commercial area is much larger. Um, it feels like this is tightening that intersection up that gives us a lot less commercial opportunity here um, because we're going to pretty much box ourselves in to only small strips of commercial on either side of Rocky Fork Road at, at that intersection. And if that intersection does move down on that north south side, it's even worse. Well, I think certainly it it could happen, but I think if it does move south, you probably do open up some opportunities maybe on the other side of uh, this, maybe. Uh, you do, but it's not part of this. It's well, not part of this development, right. certainly, but, it, but it, I think you would potentially open up some opportunities there. I think uh, this is about 55 and a half acres. You have 30 or so on the parcel to the north. Um, do you know how deep that is right there? It's showing, you know, C2, 22.4 acres, but... It yeah, looks like it's only are, a 50 foot right of way, is that right? Well, the right of way, the, the Rocky Fork Road right of way would be, would be larger than that total. Um, because if we're looking at, I'm just trying right to, away for I'm trying to figure out how road. much commercial land's really there. But the time you, if our plans come to fruition, we end up having a five lane Rocky Fork Road, turning lane and two, two, two other lanes on each side. Right. How much commercial does it really leave us there between? Do we end up with strip commercial like we have on Sam, like we have on Lowry Street? You've got about 500 feet in depth on the west side uh, from Rocky Fork, what they're showing there. It's about 1,200 feet north to south on the south of that road, and probably a thousand or so on the north side of that. I'm talking about the new, the new road going into the development. I mean. Yeah, so, so if we if we had five lanes of Rocky Fork Road right there, the five lanes plus right of way, how much of that space would we be using for the road? They're, that's they're accommodating the right of way. Proposed right of way has already been accommodated within that. In that drawing. In that drawing. Yeah, okay. okay. Now a potential connector road, frontage road, or something like that is not. But but that the Rocky Fork Road piece of that is already accommodated. Okay. In that. And it's roughly 500 or so feet deep, about 1,200 long. Uh, in that area, kind of like say in the large area south of the, the, the new roadway. Uh, you know, when I looked at it, I mean, your neighborhood Walmarts, things like that, could fit within a 500 foot depth, certainly. Uh, a larger shopping center might be a little tight, unless you rotate it or something like that, maybe place north or south instead of directly east. Uh, the other well, side, essentially, after you put the access road in there, you're pretty well left with 
strip mall type commercial. I wouldn't say it'll be strip mall. I think you got enough depth there still to do something besides just to, you know, four or five thousand square foot strip commercial. Right. I think you have room there. I think you know at the interchange. I mean, you're focusing. The focus is going to be obviously on interstate commercial things. It's going to be hotels that are on a two or three acre site. It's going to be you know, convenience stores, restaurants, those kind of things. As you get further south, and maybe even more so on the, the joining track to the south or something like that, it's where you would, I would anticipate at least, you would see probably start seeing more of those, the grocery stores, the pharmacies, and those kind of things that are servicing the residents that live in that area and not the interstate track. Uh, the further away you get from the interstate. And again, I mean, this is, I understand what you're saying with regards to this track. This is a piece of the puzzle, it's not the whole puzzle. Yeah. So, so I think you have additional property south of here. Obviously, you got lots of property on the east side of the interstate, too. And so there will be, a lot of it will be commercial. Certainly. And I guess that's my concern with this is is there enough commercial and I know there's no right answer for how much is the right amount but um, that's that and the density are my two biggest concerns with um, with the project there's another picture in our packet I don't know if you have it it's, it shows the diamond for Rocky Fork right there you just had it yeah, that, that's what I was looking at is, it, you can barely see it on the screen, I think, but up at the right side, you can see the diamond shape for the Rocky Fork Interchange. And what I was doing was envisioning that moving down I-24 because we straighten out the road, and that puts that, I mean, almost right up against that the property on the, I guess, the south or south behind the house. east side of the house. Yeah. yeah, behind the house. That's what I was looking at that was concerning me. Kevin, is there, is there any kind of equation that you've ever dealt with that tells you what kind of mix you really need for one to support the other? I mean, do you need an, you need demographics yeah. to draw business, but... You have to have people to, to serve right. it. Right, so, I mean, it's kind of what we did yeah. downtown. We, we had to get heads and beds down there, right? So, um, is there any equation that you use that would help us delineate if this is adequate or not? Before you answer that question, answer one for me if you would. If you look at this from a zoning standpoint, conventional zoning, where would it fall? Well, obviously you got C2, you got some areas that would be uh, R6, and some areas that would be more of an R4 in the single family villa part of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So. The R6, I mean, is it high or low in that range? Well, the, the town owned piece of it would be medium, right in the middle of that range. Uh -huh. the, the condo flats are on the high end. There, there are, that piece of it is about 18 units per acre, which is, uh, we've had a couple of developments to get close to that. I don't know if we hit 18. We've had some above 17 uh, density. Uh, where, did, where did Alta Depot fall? Alta Depot, that was 16.3. Okay. And, One and I think that to dovetails it. into Mark's question there because, I mean, you have different aspects of it, of, of, of the density in relation to the, to the commercial. Well, one of the things we, uh, Steve alluded to, and I know he, what he meant, but he alluded to these as apartments, which they're not. These are flat condos. These are elevator-driven flat condos, much like we required out of Alta Depot. So that found favor with us in the planning body because we're always talking about where do we put some of our senior community that don't want to go up steps affordably? And that's why, so when the word apartments came up, I, if you all watched the meeting, you may or may not have, but uh, I can't remember who was speaking, probably Mr. Manners was speaking at the time, and I heard them say, this is for sale product, this is not for rental, and my, my tone just changed. It's kind of like, this kind of meets those sort of needs that we've been asking about. So whether this is a fit or not, I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm just yeah, saying. For sale definitely makes a For sale difference. makes a big Absolutely. difference yeah. because they're owned and operated and HOA'd. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so just to kind of correct the fact that yeah. these are not apartment well, buildings. And it's not in the middle of town. Exactly. So, I mean, I think that's a plus. Yeah. Well, let me say it's not currently in the middle of town. 
who it, knows by the time. It, it might be them in Montana. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kevin, and these may not be questions that you can answer, but um, different price points for the different phases? Yeah, I would have to defer to the developer on the price <coughs> point. I have the square footages, but I don't have a price point. Are you all okay with developer sure. answering these questions? Well, wait a minute. Let me ask another question before we bring the developer up here. In looking at the um, the parking aprons in front of, say, the townhomes right there, um, some of them indicate <coughs> one vehicle, some of them indi indicate two vehicles. Is there a dif difference in the width there? I mean, there, there will be a double width driveways in all the townhomes. Some of them will actually be in the rear. There are going to be some rear loaded townhomes, but they will be. I'll have a double with two 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 uh, two car parking in the driveway. That's something we. That's another one of those things we talked about. Well, in the past several months. So. Correct me if I'm wrong. What we did when we looked at this, we applied what we worked on as a council and the planning commission as far as future PRD uh, standards, as Correct. far as building, parking, um, and um, uh, design, as yeah. far as that goes. Yeah, and all the single family and villa units will have. They can park four cars, some in front of a front entry garage, but they also have, this slide shows, they have some side entry garages uh, as well, um, so that the, the garage will still be 35 feet or be on the, the rear of the house or the side of the house. And then, so the house itself may be closer than 35, but you will still have uh, a driveway enough to accommodate four cars, which is, uh, we saw this when, when we met and we, uh, when traveled around and took some pictures of different developments and different styles and, and that was one of the things we talked about at the time this is the first development we've had to actually <coughs> to do that so but that is i mean again we are uh, this would meet all the requirements with regards to that on-site parking requirement in the, the one and two family area as well as the town home area are the setbacks adequate too yes all yeah, they're 35? all seven they're all seven and a half foot side setbacks 35 in the front the 35 in the front of the road Certainly. To, to, the garage. Garage. to the garage. To the garage, or a side, yeah. it's a side entry garage or something like that. And that's the thing I think we all discussed that we were looking at. <coughs> right. Is there supplementary parking in there? There will be supplementary parking in the townhome areas, yes. Uh, but no, not in any of the other areas. I don't know if they've got anything in the single family area, which we don't, typically don't, we don't always require that either. Um, but they have, it's, well, certainly they have parking around the amenity and all those those areas certainly mail kiosk there'll be some parking uh, but there will be guest parking oh, delineated on the, the plans for the, the town home area certainly uh, I'm going to go back to the question I asked a few minutes ago you may not have an equation but I'm trying to figure out yeah I don't have a I really don't have a problem if there's more commercial there but to me that's not a bad thing but what you don't have say that again I don't have a problem if we tried to add commercial okay right I that was a question I was going to ask you and <coughs> yeah. Mark. I mean you and Tim both yeah I don't I, I don't see that as a bad thing okay. uh, but what I want to make sure we don't do is overload the commercial product to the fact that it can't be supported by the demographics just like we did downtown I mean we're just creating a we're creating a problem if we don't have the support system for those commercial businesses to come they look at that um, Tim and I spend a lot of time recruiting as well when we go meet at ICSC and these are the, some of the things we hear, you know, what's your rooftop count, what's your demographic count. It's hard to get some of the people we might want if we can't support the commercial product with the demographics of the rooftop product. So I think it's important what that number is is the reason I asked Kevin that question. Is there any kind of a balance or equation that you've dealt with in the past. You may not know a number. No, but I really don't know that we've had, I have a number. And I don't want to put you on the question. spot to do yeah. that, but. Yeah, I really don't have a specific number. I'm sure that I could, could dig and find one. Because I think yeah, that's. To, to, to that point, I think, you know, I'm looking at the picture, this picture here. I mean, what would make me feel more comfortable is right where he's got just, just maybe double the commercial, right? I'm not saying that, that, that we don't need the rooftops that we don't need the beds I completely agree what I'm just concerned about is how narrow it looks yeah like it appears to get I'm not discounting and, it at all and on the on the pro the the development to the I guess the north of it um, you notice how far back the commercial goes it goes all the way back to the single family homes yeah. um, and that's what I was concerned about is now Wait, well, we've kind of got a big what? piece there but then we've got it narrowed down to little and it just seems like it's going to end up being is that something 
Kevin, that uh, I know you've dealt with these guys for a year, and I apologize you guys had to go through this long process for a year to get here, but is that something that perhaps there's some open conversation that can take place? I'd hate to see a good product that you recommend that our comprehensive plan welcomes, uh, that seniors can have a condo-style life over that. I'd hate to see a plan go away completely. I'd rather tweak it if that's the concern and keep this on the board. That's what I'd like to do. Well, certainly I can't speak to I know you can, but, but I didn't know if there's some conversation. They but might. certainly the, the conversation could be had. I mean, the original plan, even one that got submitted, the original plan submitted for this for the Planning Commission had the commercial piece, the, the townhome area that's right kind of in this area mm -hmm. was commercial, but those townhomes were fronting Rocky Fork Road. They, they just kind of flipped it. And we felt like the, the frontage of Rocky Fork Road having being commercial was more important. Uh, than having the townhomes on that southern well, portion that's showing the, the 22 yeah. or so acres of commercial there. And and Mark, I'm I'm like well, there's things I really like about there's this. Keep. There's things I'd like to keep, but there's also things that um, I have real concerns about, and I don't know if they can make it work. And I that's know we I'm always like. say, you know. Our portion is not worrying about whether they can financially make a deal work or not. It is what we think is best for yeah, our I residents. I totally agree with that. So, totally. here's what I I would like to offer as far as when I was looking at it. If you if you take this and you compare it to a Sam Ridley and you think about where you have the Target and uh, and even Stonecrest on the other side on on Stonecrest, you have a wider swath of commercial. And as you come down Sam Ridley it narrows and one of the things that I've found with economic development that if you're trying to attract uh, a box store if you're trying to even attract a medium-sized store or even a restaurant I mean you know we talked about this being a great location as far as restaurant hotel and whatnot as you travel away the commercial narrows and there's a fight at that point to want to have that visibility on the road so what what we found is that um, commercial uh, doesn't typically like to stack behind commercial. They want the frontage and you know if you look at Sam Ridley it's probably what 50 years to kind of build that out and you know in speaking with some of the folks that have developed it one of their their main I, I had one one person just flat out tell me I didn't know what I was doing and so we actually have tracts of land where um, we didn't get commercial development because it wasn't frontage road. So if we're looking at this, and, and again, from my perspective, this met the comprehensive plan. It, it, going back to 2008, as far as going from commercial to, you know, maybe from C2 to C4 to higher density to lower density, to me, this was textbook. Uh, and then when I compared it to Sam Ridley and, and looked at how we have the larger tracks that are immediately adjacent to the interstate and the visibility, then we saw the growth of the shopping. And as you travel down Sam Ridley, you saw the narrowing as you got into the restaurants and some of the smaller retail because they were all jockeying for that, that uh, uh, frontage position on the roadway. And quite frankly, Mary Esther, I know how hard you've worked with MPO to to continue this vision, and I, you probably have put more work into it uh, than anybody as far as your position and what you've done with MPO. And uh, I think that this is part of getting this done is to having something viable to get this thing done. You know, the other thing that caught my attention was, you know, this is a, uh, some of the same group that had to do with Providence. And then Mark mentioned, Can was it Canterbury, Mark? Is that the Canterbury? Mark? Yeah, where in, Amber in lives. Thompson Station. My yeah, daughter Thompson. lives there and they brought that up. So. And they love, the, they love the lifestyle. They love the walkability. They love the community aspect of it. And on the side with the townhomes with the elevators, I mean, you know, there's a potential for some type of professional office there where you could have the young professionals that uh, want the condo living and, and walk to work and as well as something for the seniors as far as being able to have access and walkability not not necessarily 
to an office or, or a hotel or something like that, but even to a, uh, a grocery store or to some a restaurant or something like that. It's, that's my two cents and that's where I came down and that's why I supported this project. I spoke to somebody today, I won't mention who I spoke with, but I spoke with somebody today and we, we talked about the differences of commercial today and commercial from yesteryear and uh, how it's changed due to you know, big boxes kind of filtering out and home delivery and home pickup and everything's kind of stepping in. So we really don't know at this point if we'll ever see the need for any kind of big box later on down the road in these areas. We don't know, but we have to make sure we have a place for it if it's coming. So to get it right, I hear you, to get it right, we want to get it right. I've just pointed out all the reasons why uh, we moved it forward to you guys so that we could tweak this and try to keep a good product uh, available to us. That's That's been my goal. So. Yeah, I greatly respect what, what y'all said. And, and absolutely without a doubt, this is the product that we asked for uh, with the mixed use and with the uh, um, step down from each type to the, to the other. But my question is, is this the right place for it and the right time for it? Um, We've got a long time before we're going to have a road that can handle this kind of traffic. And granted, I understand we're talking 10 years build on, out on this, and we're talking most likely a minimum of 10 years before we can start looking at um, having an interchange there. That's, that's under best conditions there. And, and, and I look at this and I see where the traffic's going to dump out to. Um, you know, there are what two, two other um, exits out of this, this, this property. One goes over to Olive Branch, uh, which to leave from that side would, would simply be the apartments or condos. Uh, otherwise, they would have to cross Rocky Fork Road to get over there. Um, and the, the bulk of the property would either have to go through the Andrews uh, development there, out the main road, or through Woodpot or Wood Point all the way through to um, uh, Rock Springs and Rock Springs Road on that side. Um, this is a lot of houses, and it's not a lot of road to handle that. And we hear pretty major complaints on these roads as it is right now. Immediately on the other side of the interstate, we've got uh, two new schools over there. Um, Further on up the road, what, three miles, four miles, we've got um, a whole school complex over there. And um, not to mention how many developments we already have approved that are further west of these. Um, I, 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 I dare say we've got a thousand homes. How many, how many homes would you say that we've got approved that have not it's probably greater than that, isn't it? Well, I mean, yeah, it would be a guess. You know, 800 to 1,000 probably that haven't been built yet. That haven't been built, yeah. plus the 1,000 that have been built. Uh, has there been 1,000 built? There's not been 1,000 built yet. Okay. There's, there's been a couple hundred probably. Right. And then there's Linwood HG that's never happened yet. <clears throat> Eventually, that's 1,500 units, you know, that. Absolutely. Of course, that's on the Amable side, but uh, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of growth out there. There so. surely is. And, um, and like I say, just the density of this and how many uh, vehicles it will put on, how many trips each day, all of that, you know, comes into play as to uh, is, it, is it the right thing at the right time here. You know, I look at here at the, uh, the phases um, and it's really kind of hard for me to follow which phase. Uh, That's one of my questions. What is the phase build out? Is yeah. that what you're worried about? Can, can you can you can you elaborate on that or I can I can elaborate on the, I mean, the phases. It's four basically is what they've had, uh, is what they've shown. We were uh, we felt it was important to bring phase one that there would be an access out to within that first overall phase, an access to Rocky Fork Road so all the traffic because otherwise all the traffic would have to go back through Woodmont to Montgomery Way to Rock Springs Road and we were trying to avoid that. 
So phase uh, one would take a complete road all the way through it, is that what you're saying? Phase one, part of phase one goes all the way to Rocky Fork, your initial entryway into the development. And they're gonna have, what they're showing is what they're trying to accomplish, uh, just in talking with them, is to have a mix. You know, some townhomes, some single families, some villas, all so they can have kind of be in all the markets together. Kevin, that's kind uh, of that's hard to see. One. Can you use your pointer just to kind of show what phase one is? Here's here's Rocky Fork. So okay. the, this is your entryway in, and it kind of follows this area here, kind of the middle part of the development, really. Okay. It's kind of phase one. You know, the, the condo part of it is kind of a, a phase two and three. Uh, There'll be some additional townhomes in phase two and three uh, as well. So, so that's phase one, and then can you point out phase two? Yeah, phase two. I mean, part of it's right here. It's in phase two, and then you have uh, well this area here is phase two, and then you have some additional townhomes on this side of the townhomes right here. Because this is the phase one piece. This would be phase two, and they are looking at the initial part of the condos in phase two and then phase three would be the rest of the condos I guess the town, these towns here um, and then this southern part of the single family right here and then basically what they have shown really the phase four piece is really this is this area here this commercial part of it this is this second road coming to Rocky Four. Based on where our current fire stations are and all that, does this require another fire station? We've got land allocated across the interstate, don't we, Brian? We do have a lot on the other side of the interstate uh, at the corner of Big Sun Road for, our, for a fire station. Yeah. But with this development, that would be required? I, I think at a point it will drive it. It's not on the initial phases. At what phase do you kind of see that uh, I would be afraid to because we got we don't you know I'd have to look at what Andrews is going to do and then on the other side so okay. but we knew I mean we knew this area that's the reason we right took care of getting a piece of property over there we knew this area was going to drive uh, very soon the need for a fire station just as we know Jefferson Pike is going to drive that need Kevin will um this developer actually be developing the commercial property or will they be someone else be doing that? Um, I would probably defer to them to answer that question. Not okay, I'll put that on my question for okay. them. Um, you said that elevators will be put in all the condos. They agreed to that? Yes. Um, you said I need to talk to them about price point. It's in the back of the property. Yeah. Um, you did say that they are going to do access roads in the commercial yes um uh did i hear you say that the development donated the right of way on the rocky fork road frontage to allow for future road development yeah, for our five can, lanes you can somewhat yep. see that on the drawings on the probably on, yeah. your, on your computer not on this screen but yeah it's on the west side yeah right here okay yeah okay and um you also said that they will be submitting a traffic study and willing to make the road improvements at the traffic study. Yes, yeah, we talked about that again this morning. Okay. They understand that. Okay. Will the traffic study encompass Albeville Road and Rock Springs Road also? We're going to have to sit down and do a real good look at the scope and how big. Certainly, a development of this size is going to have a wide scope. I, I don't know what I can specifically. I guess you go to Lee Road rather than than. Certainly, Lee Road and Rock Fork, obviously, the intersection. You know, where Lee and Seminary and uh -huh. Rocky Fork come together, that's we got to look at that seriously. Um, you know, we'll have to look at the, you know, all of it certainly, but because uh, eventually this obviously some of this traffic is going to travel Green Tree to Rock Springs, and so I think do think that would have to be included as part of it. That's going to be a big study, a big scope we we'll have to look at. We haven't we haven't scoped, sat down with our traffic engineer and done that yet, but we will be a part of that. As, if this is approved, we will be doing that. Kevin, what, what would prevent this from the landowners going to uh, uh, or having a developer contact them and say, hey, we, we want to go ahead and go in with a subdivision and uh, do, do single family on a step system? Well, certainly if they wanted, if someone 
could approach the county about doing that. It certainly, it's not in the city currently. We, if the landowner doesn't request to be annexed, we can't annex. So. Um. I think I already know your answer, but you all do this, I mean, once a month and um, review them quite often. So are you okay with the amount of commercial or would you like to see more commercial? I'm okay with the amount of commercial. I trust our staff and the people that have seen this for a year to come up with this solution and that's where I base my comfort level. Um, would more commercial bother me? No. I, I'd be okay with a little more commercial. I just want to make sure, that's why I asked the balance question, because we've got to make sure we've got the rooftops there too. And, and you know, beyond the commercial, uh, I'm one of those, I think the whole council will probably agree that we all feel this way. Finding product where our senior citizens can, can also walk to commercial, and that's kind of what I feel like this is really gives me a lot of satisfaction knowing that we've got some flat level elevator driven condominium style places they're not age restricted but it's what meets the needs of our seniors today and we've just not had enough of that product we're starting to ask for it we're starting to get a little bit more of it that's a long way of answering your question i'm comfortable with it because i think staff was comfortable with it Brian has met with these people for about a year. They were comfortable with it. I don't know the equation, but I feel like there's enough there. I don't have a problem, however, if we need to tweak it to the satisfaction of the council to try to find more. And I guess my question to the six of you all sitting up here, is this the vision that you have for around the interchange? I know we've talked about the vision out Rocky Fork Road, but is this the vision that we have? Because again, we get one shot. Well, to answer your question, I wrote it down. It's consistent with the vision and the comprehensive plan that came out of our town planner's lips. So, yes, I think it's consistent with what I thought we would see. But again, I'm flexible if the council feels the need to be flexible with it. That's just, that's why I tossed it up here in my motion, I wanted everybody to have an opportunity to put their two cents in and see how they felt. Well, I've got, I've got a few questions I, I would like to ask. Um, you know, first of all, I appreciate you guys looking. I know it's tough having to sit down on something that's pretty much new. And uh, like you said, we've got one shot to get it right. Um, I had I watched the um, the planning commission when you guys had this meeting and at that time I had four issues that, that stuck out um, the 900 square foot apartments or whatever you want to call them was the first one uh, the 1400 square foot minimum homes the um, the commercial property and and then the, and then the traffic uh, looks like that the, the 900 square foot apartments was taken care of that night, which I'm, I'm glad to see that. Not apartments. Um, okay. <laughs> the um, townhome. Townhome. 900 <laughs> square foot townhomes. There. Um, how many? How many homes were going to be at that 1,400 square foot? Of that was there 500 homes or 600? Well, I forget. There's 444 what. single family, and then there's the 24 villa units. So. 468 that would be the minimum 1400 would be the minimum and how many of those do we know how many of those are going to be of that I, I, do, I do not know that all right do we know what the maximum size of the homes are going to be I would have to defer to, to okay. develop on that um, I know we talked about Sam Ridley and I was thinking if I just go from old Nashville Highway to I-24, that's roughly a mile down through there, roughly. roughly. And we've got commercial, maybe what, a quarter mile on each side of of it and... Roughly, yeah. Okay. Maybe about a thousand feet or so. Yeah, and in my head I was thinking that's somewhere around, I don't know, 300 and some odd to 400 something acres through there. I think that's kind of about what it works out to. I just, I just took the... Yeah. 
the square footage on it. And that's, I don't know, 300 and something or so, maybe even more of commercial property there. If we're wanting this to be something like Sam Ridley, we're way behind on acreage there. We're talking 50 acres versus 300 and something. So um, that's that's where my, I guess that's where my concern is, is, is those, those several things. Again, I am excited about somebody coming with a plan to, to do it. Uh, I think the question was, does it meet our, uh, our vision? Might meet the vision, but not quite at my expectation, I guess is probably the word that, that, I'm, that I'm looking for here. Uh, but uh, I certainly think if, if people are willing to tweak it, um, I, I, I like where we're headed there. Uh, just, I, I, we got one shot. And so that's that's my my thought, my opinion. Well, I have similar concerns. Mine, um, actually, Mayor, was what you had said about the density and about the commercial. So, um, I, if we have an opportunity to to be able to uh, get more, I'm for getting more. Um, and yet again, like Jerry, there were some other things that um, had come out during the meeting that have been resolved and I do feel better about as a as this product as a product and that was um, the elevators um, uh, being in the buildings in the flats in the condos make sure I don't say apartments um, I, I think that that is uh, really good and will um, address some of the concerns we have for seniors uh, being uh, having some flexible places to to reside um, but yet again I, I feel like the mayor I, we got one chance to get this right and even with the last project I was concerned about the commercial that was that we uh, were setting aside and so I still have that concern I want to make sure that we are taking our time to do this right but as far as a product I, I'm I'm like Jerry I'm excited about it I think it's it's a great project uh, product. I just want to make sure that we are doing it in a way that is going to be the best for our town. Questions or comments? I would like to have the developer come up to answer a few of our questions if y'all are okay with that. Is there anything else for Kevin before we ask the developer to come up? Okay, thanks. I'm not sure who's going to speak on y'all's behalf. If you'll just come forward and state your name, the company you're with, and also your address, just for the record. Sure. I'll, I'll start. We have a team here tonight, and so um, my name is Rob Pease. Uh, my address is 1508 Aberdeen Drive in Brentwood. Uh, I'm with CPS Land, and we are partnering with um, Encompass Land. Ryan Manners is here representing Encompass, and also uh, Willow Branch Homes, they'll be doing the home construction. We are a uh, development company based in Brentwood that have been developing, been in business for about 24 years. Uh, we do a lot of development, but have done quite a few large scale master plan communities similar to this. Providence was mentioned earlier, that's one that we um, developed. And um, so we understand the, the mix of units and the, um, how it all works together, and we like to create something that you can create a lot of amenities in a place where. Uh, that has different price points and different products for all different people, different stages of their life. And also the proximity to commercial is really exciting, someone had mentioned. We like the idea of the walkability. Um, we are uh, believe in amenities. We believe in, uh, in some of the amenities the, that we're creating here is the pool complexes on either side, trails, things like that, all go into creating something cohesive. Uh, I would like to, uh, and Ryan will speak to some of the price point questions that, that came out, um, but as far as a, a few things that were mentioned, I think I can address or I'd like to. Right. Uh, as far as the amount of commercial, we have worked, again, for the, for the last year with staff to kind of work back and forth. I think uh, there were some, some great points brought up is there, there's a lot of commercial on the east side as far as part of the Enon Springs overlay. You know, there's a tremendous amount. What we have here in the 55 acres, roughly, we've, we've allocated for that. Uh, even if you take out the interchange, if you use about 10,000 square feet of retail or commercial per acre, it's a good rule of thumb, that's about 480,000 square feet 
of commercial that would be accommodated just on our site, on just what we've shown here. Um, the Andrews property, if you use that same rule of thumb, that would probably be close to 300,000, maybe 290,000 square feet. So pretty, pretty large amount here. And then if you go on Eden Springs side, it, just some quick math, that's it, probably in the 1.5 million to 2 million square feet of you know, uh, potential retail or commercial. Big broad brush approach, so I, I don't have exact numbers. But the way we've looked at, and we've talked to some commercial developers as well, is that the gateway to Smyrna, which is what this is going to be, clearly, you know, most of the, the traffic is going to be flowing into Smyrna and kind of that whole area. So it makes sense the bulk of the commercial is over on the Eden, I mean, on that side. This is going to be much less so as far as the viability, although if the, the connection over to the, to the west, the Cool Springs, which I think is desired, happens, sure, there'll be some here. But I think someone pointed out really well that you'll have interstate commercial up by the interchange and then it'll transition to more of a neighborhood services. Um, so in the depth of the neighborhood services, a 500 foot is actually a pretty, pretty good depth, pretty ideal. Um, and again, as, as one of the council members mentioned, it, you can't really do a whole lot of depth um, as far as what retailers want. They want visibility. Um, and then there is much more depth along the interstate where you could see hotels um, and things of that nature moving toward the back. The other point that was made I think is very um, appropriate is the future commercial. It, boy, we, we don't know. We're all guessing and it's changing very quickly. It's changed uh, tremendously in the last year or the last few months. And the amount of, uh, you know, uh, things that are done online is going to continue. So we have some concerns about allocating too much area to commercial. Um, so that, that's just a response to that question or that concern. Um, I think uh, so those are the points I wanted to make. Was there any questions related to what questions? Those comments? Yes. Can you address which one? Commercial or is that oh, going to so. uh, Yeah, so since that's a, the, the viability of that commercial is, is years out because it's really dependent upon the interchange. And so we can't say who's going to develop that. Um, basically, our intent is to hang on to that land until such time that it's ready to be developed. And so, no, I don't, we don't know who would develop it. We're not a commercial developer, we're a residential developer, but we have worked on projects like Providence that had commercial as a component. So we know a lot of commercial developers. We may partner with them. We may sell the land unknown at this point. And I understand where you're coming from, but it's much easier to, mm -hmm. to move commercial back to residential than it is vice versa. And I think that's where my concern comes is uh, in regards to is there enough? I still have questions about the access road. Um, to me, those are... Uh, traffic relieving measures, which, uh, you know, with Sam Ridley Parkway, we have great experience with that. And, and some of it was done very, very well. And then some of it left a little bit to be desired. And, you know, we, we have one chance to get this right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd like to see this one done properly sure. and uh, uh, be able to tie it in so that it uh, is a, um, a viable traffic relief. Sure. Yeah, and, and we, you know, want to do the right thing, and like we said, we'll do, you know, do the traffic study and uh, do what is requested on the traffic study. Um, and I think. But you apparently, know, it's going to require you to give up some of the commercial. So there we go with the pinching on the commercial. As far as giving up the commercial with uh, which portion of it? You talking about the access roads? Uh -huh. We talked about. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the the access roads, for what I understand, was the area that they wanted that's requested between the commercial and the residential. Is, is what I understand. And so the width of that may be, I don't know, maybe it's you know 40 or 50 feet, 50 feet, something like that. So in that scale, it's really not a big portion of that. It'd be along the, you know, the backside of the commercial on those parcels. So yeah, we'd, we'd be happy to show in the next iteration, you know, kind of show how that impacts the commercial and how it relates to it. But I don't think it's a big, a big impact from a land standpoint. Um, and I don't know if this is a question for you or a question for Kevin, but um, does that give sufficient stacking off of Rocky Fork Road 
that it doesn't become a boondoggle rather than a uh, than a, a help. As I said, that depth is about 500 feet, so you would have 450 or or so feet between Rocky Fork Road and that that roadway. You stack 45 cars in there. Is that what you're saying? Roughly. Yeah, so you would have, that, I don't think, that the, having that road that far off of the road, I certainly see, traffic study will have to show this, I'm not sure, but I can certainly see that the, that initial, that intersection where you have the east-west road on both sides, that's, I mean, that's eventually going to be a signalized intersection and, and all that, so I think you're going to have some traffic control in that area as well, that build out. Would the, the lower road down there, would that end up probably just being a ride out? Right in, right out. Yeah, we have to look at that with the traffic study potentially. I mean, it does line up, but there is another, another oh, there county is road on the east cross, side uh, as well. So, uh, probably too close to that main intersection to be a signal, I would think. But how far is? Uh, do you know how far that the main entrance is from the current interstate? Well, the total roadway that we're annexing is 3,400 feet, so I'm going to guess, it's a guess, just looking at the scale, it's probably about 2,000 from the interstate. A little less than half a mile. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, on, I'm trying to think through access roads, and, and I know HG's mentioned this a couple times. Um, this is on the east side. Of where we expect most of the commercial to go. I'm sorry, this is on the west side instead of the east side. So I'm thinking of Sam Ridley Parkway. We don't have access roads on the west side. I'm thinking of uh, Medical Center Parkway. There's no double access roads on that side. You take Fortress right on out. That's where your pocket stations and all those things are. I'm thinking of 99. I'm thinking of 96. Uh, they really don't have them on that side of the interstate. How important are they is my question. When we know the traffic flow in the feed is going to come towards town. Case in point, why we've had to work with Genie Lane and why we've had to work with Rock Springs Road. But it, it appears to me that a lot of our interchanges, as you go from here to Murfreesboro, they don't have those secondary access points like we do on our east side. And, and uh, you're probably true. It's probably they don't, may not have these, those roadways. They probably do have cross access though. Still, um, yeah, I was thinking of like uh, Medical Center over to 96. Uh, yeah, they're 96 there. over to Salem. But some of those are through subdivisions. I mean, you know, like Fortress, for example, they've got some commercial there, and then you have to go down Manson Pike to go the back way down Florence or whatever. But yeah, there's yeah. access, but. I don't know, if, and I'm just trying to understand HG's point about the access is somebody said you'd have to lose commercial to get it in there. I don't see that, but um, there's roundabouts in these developments, which I think I really, really like that helps the flow. If people will learn to drive them. <laughs> I love them if people learn to drive them. Um, but I also think it depends on does this road end up connecting to McEwen. If this road ends up connecting to McEwen, was, yeah. and I think we have to assume that that's going to happen. Yeah, no, without um, that, and there's some cuts here. It looks like for right. that growth. Well, and if that happens, traffic's not only going to be only coming into the town of Smyrna. Yeah. it's going to be going the other way but too. I and I mean, based on and Brian. Just kind of a quick update on that. Where do things stand? Uh, I had the opportunity today to be at a luncheon uh, with Tennessee City Manager Association, and I talked to Brentwood and Franklin. And uh, Brentwood, I'm not sure, made the submission by December on theirs, but Franklin did. I know uh, Nolansville was working on theirs. Uh, you know, we're still having communications about that. I mean, it's something that, that we're pushing hard for. Uh, everybody is, is coming to the table willing to discuss this. And what he's talking about with the December submission is so that it gets on the MPO, Unified Transportation Plan, which we're right. voting on in February, which is our plan that um, is updated every five years. And that's why it's so important. That also is what shows the regional connectivity for us to be able to go back to Federal Highway and to TDOT to be able to do the ask. So that was what he's talking about, the... Um, yeah, that, 
And that was kind of my thought process when we were talking about the commercial is I think this road connects to McEwen and it becomes another Highway 96, a major thoroughfare between Smyrna and Owensville, Brentwood. And if you think about 96 on both sides of the interstate and the commercial, yeah, you know, we, we were talking about Sam Ridley, but Sam Ridley's really only goes one direction. It doesn't go off the interstate and go both directions. Uh, 96 does, and I think this, this has that potential to be that next major thoroughfare between those cities. And that's that's the reason I'm thinking the commercial may be different here than the other, the other intersections. And I guess here's my thinking with that is, it, it probably might never happen while any of us are sitting on this council. But we have a responsibility to leave a foundation for councils that sit in the seats that we're sitting in right now after we're gone, that they can then build on that so that they can have future growth. I don't want somebody to be sitting here 10 or 15 years from now and say, what the heck was that council thinking? They could have done X that would have, case in point, look at what happened to Sam Ridley Parkway going the other way. How many times have we heard that road was supposed to go to Williamson County? I don't want them looking back to us and saying the same thing. I think we've done a good job protecting this corridor from what's <coughs> happening now. I mean, we're all on this, you know, we're all on this to make sure that doesn't occur. But, but I want to make sure we get it right. Yeah, I, do, here I think we all do. I, we're well all compelled too. to do that. My, uh, I guess my question would be if we're going to uh, look at maybe trying to expand the commercial product here, don't we, isn't it fair for us to tell the developer what our mindset is behind that? What's that look like? Because they can keep coming back with different plans and different plans, but what are we looking for there? That's, and that's where I need help is I don't know what that number is. I, I, I don't know what the right answer is in I, regards to I wonder to if the developer has any idea um, if we could bring him back up, somebody to maybe speak. Is that okay, Mayor? I, I'm fine with that. I mean, I think he said he feels like there's enough commercial here. and. But I'm, I'm asking them if there's a way oh. to expand this or not in their plan. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> try to answer that I think um, like I said before it's hard to know you know the right amount of commercial what I think you know would be helpful is if we did a, a layout that showed kind of hypothetically how this land could be used and come up with a little more accurate assessment of square footage we can look at you know what if the the interchange moves south you know how does that impact it and um, so, I mean, it, it, we'd be happy to show that on the next round if, if we're fortunate enough to get to, you know, the second reading, we can bring that back to this body to, to look at and and we can be flexible to determine, hey, if it, we'd like to know if there's a good reason to expand the commercial that we want to know, okay, it makes sense and why and, and a little more depth here seems to make it work better. We're open to that. but. You know, without just kind of pulling a number out of the air, we'd rather look at it a little bit more analytical and see if we can come up with something and share it with the spot. And I guess that's why I asked the question, because none of us really know what that looks like. None of us do. Right. And so we're asking for more, but we don't know how much. Right. Yeah. And I don't want you to think that none of us up here are excited about this product. I, I hope what you're taking away from this is that we are excited, but... Um, a lot of responsibility to to make this decision sure. and um, so I do have a couple of other questions that sure. I think will help um, I think it might be um, it's more in lines with price point and things like that okay. so I don't know if that's well I'll probably have Ryan come up and okay and you can probably answer some hey of Ryan that. Ryan if you'll just state your name and address and um, and if you'll also tell us what company you're with Ryan Manners with Encompass Land Group, 2250 Chaucer Park Lane in Thompson Station, Tennessee. Gotcha. So a couple of questions that I had. Um, based on Jerry, Jerry, you had said the home size range from 1,400 to what? So right now our plans would top out around 3,000, 3,200 square feet. We actually don't have a 1,400 square foot product, but again, this is a 12-year build out. And, and we want to be able to adapt with market changes. We, we see a lot of need for single level living that may not have that second floor for our, you know, our senior citizens. And, and also first time home buyers, it just, it's not only a, is it 
offer a price point because of the square footage, but it's just low maintenance for somebody that may be living alone. Right. Um, can you kind of look at the phases and talk a little bit about price points within the different phases? Sure, and again, it's all market dictated, but uh, I mean, we, we expect them to be pretty similar to what we're selling for in Canterbury and Thompson Station, which I, I believe Vice Mayor Atkins was familiar with. You know, we, we expect the single family homes to range somewhere beginning in the probably the low threes and, and extending up to around 500. Um, and then we expect the, the townhomes to, to be tiered under that and then the condos to be tiered under that. Uh, that's that's kind of how we're looking at. So we'd be in the 250 to 300 range for the townhomes. Maybe maybe there's one that's a little smaller square footage. Might you said what 250 to 200? Two, 250 to 300. 250 to three. And then okay. the the, the t uh, condos would be uh, below that. It's probably ideally probably starting around 200 to 250. Okay. And they they may they may be a a floor plan out there that dips into the 179 you know in that range but that's probably going to be a smaller square footage and certainly we're going to listen to the market and adjust to accommodate the buyers okay um answer that time frame for each one of the phases any idea so obviously it's going to be a lot more than four phases than what we're showing here that's a broad scale we'll have phase 1a you know really we've dictated the phasing by what we have to do engineering wise and how we reach different products on the site so um, I, we expect I mean this will be 12 to 15 years okay how quickly would y'all start do you think so we'd probably be looking at horizontal development taking probably the better part of, of, of 12 to 15 months for the first phase and then after that getting product on the ground we'd probably be looking from a grading permit for the initial land clearing permit we would probably be 28 30 months before we would be delivering product other questions for ryan I hear you say sub 200 on some of that product. It, it Possibly. Would be, it, it would be probably a lot. I don't, I don't want to mislead you guys or, or no, leave no, something off. From, but, it's market driven, I understand. Yeah, that. I mean, you know, we if, if it would probably be one of the condos if we had a, a one bedroom flat right. that really set up for uh, whether that be a first time home buyer that doesn't want to go out and rent and wants to invest or that. Uh, maybe be a uh, one of our senior citizens senior living okay. yeah I thought I, I just wanted to verify that because I've not seen that in a while <laughs> so you know how many yeah it's a tough price point to hit how many condo buildings are you expecting on this side so our original plan um, had uh, I believe it was 16 16 buildings but with the elevators we'll probably condense and do okay. a more uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a more efficient layout uh, that's not so linear to, to help access there so that may look a little different now that we're bringing the elevators into that product so but I would say no more than 10 w with the elevators we'll probably condense that space other questions thank you sir Okay. Um, I know this is kind of second opportunity for you two to digest it for all of us. Um, I think it's first chance to digest it. So uh, I think we have a lot of questions. What are you all comfortable with tonight? You know, I believe that, as I said, I believe the product is in, it's a good product, but I think it's in the wrong place. I think that the density is too great for the area that it's in, and, and more and above, I just don't believe that the, that the traffic, um, you know, because we're not just talking about the traffic here, we're talking about the traffic of all of the other subdivisions that are, that are built, all of the, everything else that is, 
is out there in that area. And, you know, essentially, you know, when you go back to what those roads are, there's, those are paved buffalo trails. You know, just over the years, the, they started running wagons down them and then cars down them. But, I mean, they're still well, basically running on the same place that the buffalo trails ran down. And, uh, you know, at some point, we're going to have to do some pretty serious upgrades, not just on Rocky Fork Road, but on some of the other roads that are, that are feeders to Rocky Fork Road. Well, I think that's where you take advantage of impact fees and, and you take care of, you know, you work as far as offsets with what the builder does as, as far as road improvements to impact fees to get the offsets there. And I think that's how you build them. I mean, I, I don't disagree, but I mean, it's 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 just an overwhelming uh, degree of traffic. Well, I mean, if we were gonna if we were gonna do this in a year, I would agree that that would probably be just a groundswell of traffic. But if we're looking at a, a 12 to 15 year build out, then I think that that allows time for roads to catch up. I mean, we saw it with. Uh, the project from the Gwynn property where we're getting, Kevin, how much roadway and a bridge improvement there? The bridge improvements, I can't recall, those linear feet, it's, it's a long, yeah. widening rock springs basically across the whole front edge and then improving the intersection with the signal. Yeah. That was in lieu of impact fees, was it not? There will be some, uh, yes, there will be So also that's kind of the mechanism or impact fees really need to help us drive to these road improvements it's in lieu of. And uh, I think it's time that we take a hard look at that mechanism because we do have a lot of growth and it's happening all kind of all at once. The market's good and so we have a lot of development knocking on our door. Uh, I think that's a great way to get our roads improved and and trade that off. Let them do that in lieu of. And right well, there on the site where it's making the impact. We've been doing that all along. I mean, and, well, and, and so we're still, we're still bankrolling that and building our projects as we go. Well, but you know, take, also have to take into account how much other raw land is out there, which more than likely will end up being residential. And of course, that's one of the things that's always, you know, we've always had to take into account. We, the public sees us build these houses and everything, and they say, oh, Sparta's making all this money on it. But we all know that residential doesn't pay for itself. Well, Even after the impact fees, residential doesn't pay for itself on, on the municipal level. But well, you jumped in before I finished. I'm sorry. <laughs> so... My point was this, uh, we just did this in a place where we felt like it needed to be done. We haven't done it on every development, so I disagree with you there. You tell me a number of developments where we've traded road work for impact fees. We haven't done a lot of that, so we've caught on to this now. This is a mechanism we're starting to use, and uh, you know, just so the public knows, impact fees covers a lot of things. It covers the parks, it covers uh, emergency services and things like that, so there's an element of that we still need. But we have to be careful that we're not overspending maybe on a park system where we need roads or vice versa. So, and that's my point. I'm not saying I don't like parks. I do. I love them. We got well, it's not like we have the ability to, to, to move funds well, from one my, to the but other. But if we're either. trading those fees off for road improvements, then we do have the ability. Yeah, for road only. Yeah, right that's my right. point. Yeah. And then um, I, I, I'm sorry. But well, I, 10 to 15 years is going to be a blink of an eye, you guys. I mean, oh. it is going to be in in no time. Um, but the other thing that we talked about in um, widening Enon Springs Road West from 3 to 5 was using, Tom Rose sitting in here, is using the, um, and I can't think, it's not the state access funds. I can't think of it. Interstate, is it interstate? The interstate access funds. Yes. Yeah. Can those be used going from the other way as well? If and when we move from three to, to five? The interstate, I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would think that would get heavily looked at, especially if we get to thoroughfare. Right. Approved. And then that's one thing that um, that's the when we've talked way. about that we already had right away for the five lane was looking at using that money possibly to go from three to five. So. I mean, we've just got a lot of road projects that are out there and, and uh, um, looking at confining our, our impact fees to one particular area is hard to do. I mean, they, they've got to oh. go through a lot of diverse projects. Well, I think we're going to run into the same pro problem here that we've run into at Rock Springs Road. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, there's a ton of traffic on, on that road mm -hmm. that needs to be, I mean, 
and let me say this meeting with the mayors across middle tennessee on a monthly basis the ones that are having development like we are which is most are dealing with the exact same things of um, you know where do we come up with the money for the road um, improvements so well, and, and the road going to williamson county it's not like the state or the or the federal government's going to come here in here and pony up for all of that we're going to be uh, invested for a large chunk chunk of change for that right um, I guess where I'm going with this is that there's still a lot of questions I think that we have and um, a lot of things that we'd like to see but I think we're all excited about this plan is this something that we would like to give them the opportunity to go back and and look at over the next 30 days I, would be I hate to have the opportunity I mean I hate the chance to turn it down and then they walk away feeling like we don't I, I would like to see um, I, I think was it mr. Pease mentioned that potentially they could look at the numbers and see if more commercial makes sense uh, obviously I, I, I get that you know your primary objective is the investment and the return on your investment but ours isn't necessarily just the money so I would like to see those numbers, but it's not just the financial viability of it as much as the benefit to the town as a whole, the tax base it generates for us, those kinds of things. If you're willing to put that together and come back, that would help me get there. Um, that's my biggest concern. Is that I really think, um, and, and I agree, Tim, with what you said about how commercial narrows. I completely agree. I'm just not sure half miles enough in this case. Um, that it should start narrowing that quickly. Um, that's my only concern. I, I completely agree, but that's how it should work and that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm just afraid that it's too close to the intersection and if that intersection moves south, it may even be closer. Well, and keep in mind, this is, what, half a mile? How far are we from the interstate here? Yeah, it's about a half a mile. And that's, not the, that's not to say that the projects don't continue, <coughs> you know, as, as this builds out, yeah, yeah. and it, it, you know, and taking, you had a great example of 96, you know, after maybe a mile or so from 24, it's pretty much rural residential. Pretty much rural residential, absolutely. So I, I would anticipate that we would see something more so here because this is probably more 96-ish. Well, that, that's what I'm thinking. If you could find a way to incorporate a little bit more depth of commercial into a product that still works for you guys and works for us, then it seems like everything else about the product I, I like I'm, I'm a little concerned about the townhomes being too close to the intersection if it does move south I'm gonna be honest I may be I'm speculating but it to me it makes sense that that intersection will move south it just makes more sense to straighten that road up so I'm hoping that logically when the decision gets made we can get to that decision and so that's why I keep looking at it that way you look at it on a map it just doesn't make sense not to move it and that's what I'm concerned about so it, I would be willing, I'd be really interested in them being able to come back with maybe that addition and that everything else about the prod, that product I like. And I don't want you to think I don't trust you or any of that, but um, I think what your end goal is may be different than ours in regards to you have a financial, ours is making sure we have the right project. Kevin, is that something in regards to getting to a number for commercial? I mean, I know you said you probably could dig something up. I mean, is that something GNRC through their planning and, and those individuals yeah. might be able to help us with? I, th I think I can, through them or... I'm or sure you have Institute many other... Somebody out there has some numbers, I'm sure. Yeah, what, uh, what ICSC I, maybe. Or well, and, else, and I guess my question <laughs> to that is, I would... I don't want them to go to all that work and doing that and then come back and we say, oh, no, we wanted more or whatever. So I think we need to be looking at that number to be right. able to give them the number of what we want to see. Yeah, one thing I was going to say is that it, it, because of your point about, and, and I agree completely, we have no idea what commercial really looks like in a few years or a few months um, because of what's going on. Um, a plan to set aside that commercial with a long-term plan of, you know, hey, if we turn out we don't need this and brick and mortar is not building like it used to, it can always switch back. We could potentially switch it back to residential if that makes sense in the five years by the time but you get to phase to four. The other way. It's impossible. Once it's already yeah. residential and you started developing, it's, it, you can't go commercial. 
So that would be the other piece is I don't want you to think you got to have in phase one all this commercial build out. I'm just saying set aside that commercial uh, maybe for the first five years of your development and then and then that way we have the option of doing something different if we need to. Um, in y'all's mind is are you more comfortable if they're willing to defer going that route? I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I can vote on a first reading at this point with the lack of information and give them a positive vote on first reading and I want to give this project a shot and I'm not to that point. There may be there may be four people on this council that are to that point and if and if y'all are to that point make the motion and we'll move forward. I'd be totally fine if that's what the option they chose to help massage this a little bit. One thing I want to throw out here though because of development what we need to understand all of us is if they give up more land for commercial they're probably giving up some yield and in that they may have to redesign their single family and we've got to be careful of that too right because at some point they got to find their yield in there they're giving it right. up that's all I'm saying right but I think we have a obligation to ask sure if it's the wishes of them they, they'd be the one to defer ask for right. a Jeff that would be okay right <coughs> It's going to depend on to the degree of substantial change to that put of whether it needs to come back to the planning commission or not. I mean, you do have, you, you all as council do have authority under the ordinance to make changes to the put that's been recommended by planning. Um, you know, yeah, I think we'd have to look at the degree to what changes actually come out of it after they uh, review it again and come back with some changes. As to whether it could come straight back to you or have to go back to planning commission first, we just have to look at it. I want to look at it to see. And, and I guess my thing is for you all. Do you want to take the chance of denial on first reading, and then you are going to have to go back to planning no matter what, or and there's a possibility you might as well. And do y'all need to take a minute yeah. to talk about it? And while they're doing that, I just do want to brag on Canterbury because <laughs> my daughter, there's a lot of green space there, walking areas. I mean, it, it's a community, pools and mix. And uh, if anybody has not yet been over to Canterbury, that's what this product's going to look like in a big picture. And I think it's worth the drive. Go over to Thompson Station, get off that exit right there, take Critz Lane down by the new schools and take a ride into Canterbury. And uh, the concern I heard about some minimum square footages, uh, Mr. Manners hit on this. There's hardly anything in, in Canterbury that I would think, not a lot, that hits 1,400 minimum. It's, it's uh, 25 and 3,000. And so I think they're just trying to make sure they have some market room in case they have to adjust. Jeff, I don't know that since I've been mayor that we've been in this position. Can we, without voting, say kind of how we feel about it and what we're more comfortable with so they kind of have an idea of where things are or no? Sure, and you can postpone it till the next meeting if you'd like to do that. Right. And I guess that's where I am. I'm, I'm not comfortable at yeah. this point. I, I don't know that I could give a yes vote to, um, to first reading without having more information. Anybody else want to, so we kind of, so they kind of know where your I'm assuming you're good with moving forward. Or I, I support the project and comfortable moving forward with as is. Okay. And, and I would feel that way, I think. But I'm also the whole reason I said I want the council to massage this. So I'm I'm good with whatever the council sees as a good fit. Raquel, you are more comfortable waiting. And HG, what about you? Just to be honest, I don't think I'm going to like it any better next month or the month after that. I mean, you know, when we start looking. He won't. At, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. It, you know, it gets down to the density and the road capacity and, and quality of life for the people that live out there. You know, I've, I've done, ever since I've been on the council, I've always looked at something and said, okay, if I lived there next to it, what would I think about it? How would I, how would I, would I want this, this development next door to where I live? Or would I want to live in this? Are we and, wasting you know, time? being able to move right. around is, is, is where it's at. Do you two want to say anything? 
I think I've already said I'd like to see the changes. I would like to see them come back. So I guess that means I'm. I would prefer a postponement at this point. I'm. I'm concerned with the. the I, I don't know what the right amount is, but it looks like it's not enough to me, commercial-wise. So Jeff, hearing kind of how everybody feels, what are <laughs> options at this point legally? Uh, you can. Someone can make a motion to. Uh, uh, postpone till the next uh, council meeting in September um, or you can uh, also uh, make a motion to approve you can make a motion to deny uh, and with the, with the motion to approve you could also put stipulations or, or conditions rather on that so that's uh, it's kind of up to you Can there be discussion with the developer as to what their? Sure. That was a little bit of an unsure sure. I wasn't. Is that I, I didn't know that I was understanding what you what you I'm meant not, at first. I'm not sure it's going to affect my opinion one way or the other. What they want, honestly. At this well, point. if they say they want to vote one way or the other. It, I mean, if they want to call for a vote, they. And, say and I guess it, are, are they willing to? defer for another 30 days if we postpone it then they don't have a choice <laughs> that's what i'm getting at so is it a motion well i'm sort of <laughs> curious about what the point in asking them is what your because i think it's either going to be deferred for 30 days and if they're not willing to do that because of some sort of deal or anything then it doesn't do any good to defer it anyway i could make a motion to deny please um, so of course our first choice would be a motion to approve with uh, you know the condition that we do some of the things we talked about analyzing the commercial um, if that's the will of the body is to defer it and that's the preference in, in cost coming back we'd be we'd accept that as well okay I'll make a motion to defer a second a motion and a second to defer to Comments? the next meeting to the next meeting is that your second please? yes ma'am okay we have a motion and a second to defer till the next meeting um, in those things listening to the council I think that we want to see more things in regards to um, access roads in regards to um, more commercial and Kevin I think um, I think we want to do our homework in regards to um, what is that amount of commercial okay so we have a motion and a second to defer um, Miss Diane call the roll please Councilman Cole how do you vote yes Councilman Morrell yes Councilwoman Peebles? Yes. Councilman Short? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Vice Mayor Atkins? Yes. Mayor Reed? Yes. Okay, we will defer this until um, the next meeting. We appreciate y'all's um, flexibility and being willing to work with us. Okay. Um, item two is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 33D group A parcel 27.02 to go from C4 to C2. It's re requested by Keaton Patel. The property contains approximately 1.55 acres and is located at the corner of Mason Tucker Drive and Enon Springs Road West. This is a first reading. Kevin. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a request. It is at the corner there of Mason Tucker and Enos Springs West. Uh, Landing's plan would support commercial development here. Uh, surrounding zoning is a mix of C4, R2, R3, <coughs> as well as a two PUDs, which is the Hummingbird Hill development to the south and west, and the Shanks and Associates development, which is uh, directly across Mason Tucker Drive. Uh, the nearest property zone C2 is at the intersection of Old Nashville Highway and Enos Springs, which is about 1,000 feet away. Um, the PUD that is directly across Mason Tucker, part of that PUD, in addition to some townhouses that were approved, uh, there's a, a C4 type building at the corner. Uh, Planning Commission did review this. They did recommend denial. I would concur that this is not a fit for this area 
C2 zoning. This is more of a C4 area, and I would recommend denial as well. Questions for Kevin on this? Did they, did they mention why C2? What are they? They want to build a gasoline convenient. station convenience store there. Right there in the middle of the Which is not allowed in C4. I make a motion that we deny the request. I second it. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of denial say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is denied. Item three is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 28, part of parcel 44.00 to go from R6 to C2. It's requested by Kevin Walder and the property contains approximately 3.62 acres and is located along Sam Ridley Parkway West and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mary Council, this is another C2 request from R6 to C2. It is about 3.62 acres. It is immediately adjacent uh, to the east or immediately adjacent <coughs> to Sam Ridley Parkway West uh, adjacent to some uh, some property was rezoned to C2 a couple of years ago now that is under development and this would be an extension of that development uh, land use plan would support a mix of office retail and multifamily here and surrounding zoning is all a mix of C2 and R6 the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this request and I would also recommend it questions for Kevin on this I make a motion to approve a second we love it when we trade R6 for commercial. Um, any discussion? The only thing I'll say is there's several places around town where we say C2 just doesn't fit. This is one of those where it fits. That's all oh, I'll say. Great. <laughs> I think it's 500 feet deep, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it may be. By the way, by the way, to your point, the R6 behind it, we'd like to see C2 there too. So we wish it was deeper than <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have a motion. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Kevin, just a question. Is there anything uh, in, in the, what is this called, Raven's Point? Raven's Point, <laughs> yes. Is there anything been brought in to go on any of this? We've had the preliminary plat actually a couple of different times because it expired once and they changed it a little bit as well uh, for section one. Uh, as well as section two just this last month, which actually would extend Jenny Lane as part of that section would go all the way to Montlo Boulevard. Uh, as far as the individual lots, we do not have anything submitted at this time, but I know that I've heard that they, there's people looking certainly at some of those out parcels for sure. Other questions for Kevin? Okay, we are ready to move into item four, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation of approximately 2,030 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Hickory Grove Road, and this is a first reading. Kevin, before you move into that, sure. um, I know that um, there might be people in the lobby that are here about this. Um, I want you all to know that sometimes it gets really frustrating in this job when inaccurate information is put out there and over the last week or so there's been inaccurate information that has been put out in the form of robocalls um, in the form of things on Facebook as well as um, flyers that were sent or put in your mailbox they were put in the mailbox and um, you were led to believe that this was having a discussion about the quarry and the development that is at um, Jefferson Pike and 840. And that is not accurate information. That project was um, passed a year ago. This is actually about the improvement to Hickory Grove Road and so that the town of Smyrna can have oversight as to what happens to the improvement of that road. It bothers me greatly that people don't do their homework before they get <coughs> our citizens and those that live on the outskirts of our community all in an uproar. And we tried as best we could with the information and as people asked us to inform you of what actually was taking place. This has absolutely nothing to do with that project. So whoever was out there that put that information forth, um, I hope next time you do your homework better 
and um, you don't get a lot of people in an uproar over something that was already approved a year ago. So um, with that said, Kevin, you may proceed. Sure. So this shame, shame, shame. What? Did you say shame, shame. Um, no, but I was thinking that. <coughs> yeah, this is a recommendation uh, from the Planning Commission to annex 2030 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Hickory Grove Road. Uh, as the mayor alluded to uh, a little over a year ago, the town did annex several parcels along Jefferson Pike and 840. Um, as a part of that annexation and PUD zoning, there was a requirement put in place uh, that improvements are to be made to a portion of Hickory Grove Road. Uh, at that time, uh, Hickory Grove Road was not annexed. Uh, there was a concern, certainly, of surrounding uh, parcels of land that were not a part of the annexation request, and we try to avoid that whenever possible. Uh, however, it's, it really makes the most sense for us to have uh, ownership of that roadway because of the requirement of the improvements to the town. They are required to build those to town standards. Uh, it will allow for the town inspections uh, to be in, in standards to be held up to. Uh, and so uh, we did uh, recommend this was a staff-initiated uh, annexation. Uh, we're not annexing any private land. This is only the existing public right-of-way. Uh, we will be surrounding two tracts of land. Uh, both of those are vacant tracts, uh, so we're not surrounding any, anyone's home or anything, but, uh, but they, they are vacant. But um, this would just be, be the annexation of that existing right-of-way. The Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval unanimously, and I would also recommend it. Can you tell me which is it on this map? Is it 01601? Which ones are the ones we're surrounding? It's the two tracks, if I, if I can make my mouse move, there's a track here and then this track here. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, okay. There's a couple other tracks that were surrounded by some of the annexation. If we annexed all the way to the northernmost point, we would annex. Uh, this just annexed the portion of the road where the improvements are going to be made. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important for us to have control over that? Well, if we're going to be requiring a road to be built to the town standards, uh, if we don't own it, then we're trusting the county highway department or their county engineer. I trust those guys. They're good people. But uh, I do, I think it's best if the town's going to be uh, providing, obviously, the access or the development to the, is going to be within the town. The access to along Hickory Grove Road as well. Of course, we already annexed Jefferson Pike, but Hickory Grove Road needs to be in the town as well, where that access is going to be coming from. So. And it's going to be an improved road. Sure. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So it's not as if there's going to be something detrimental when it comes to the improvement Absolutely. of that road. So, um, questions or comments on this? That's going to be a nice improvement there when that happens. It's it's not a it's not a great place to exit Hickory Grove right now, but the signalization coming that we've talked about and that road improvement, I think that really puts a lot of safety in that, in that intersection. So. Do I have a motion? So we we'll approve. Second. Motion and a second, Miss Diane. You good? Motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 5 is consideration of a resolution authorizing the acquisition of property by negotiation or condemnation for the purpose of carrying out the Genie Lane project. Kevin, you taking that? Yeah, this is just a planning commission to re review this as a mandatory referral. This is, a, uh, as of course the council is aware, the town will be extending the project, uh, extending Genie Lane from Wolverine Trail to Potomac Place. There are several properties where we will have to obtain right-of-way and utility easements. Uh, the Planning Commission is required to, to review that and make a recommendation to the, to the Council. Uh, and the Planning Commission, they did review it. They did find that it is consistent with the long-range plan of the town, and, it, and they did recommend approval unanimously, and I would also recommend approval. Okay. Um, questions for Kevin on this? to approve there. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 
Item B is our package liquor board report. There were no applications for the town council to consider at this time, so we will move on to item C, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a development agreement with Blakeney Partners GP relative to the road impact fee offsets. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, as we discussed this at the workshop, this is a development uh, impact fee agreement like we talked about earlier tonight quite a bit. Uh, with the uh, developers of the Blakeney uh, development. Uh, they are required as a part of their development to realign and rebuild the intersection of Rocky Fork, Amelville Road, and Morton Lane as a part of phase one uh, of the development. Uh, the developer will not be building any houses, but will be selling lots only, and so therefore will not be paying any impact fees. Uh, the ordinance allows for agreements to be made between the town and the developer when the builders pay the impact fees and the town then periodically reimburses the developer at 70% of the improvement costs as the fees are assessed at 70% of the maximum fee. I did include the reimbursement requests, the various information with regards to construction costs and all that which we have reviewed. Uh, the cost estimate for the improvements is $345,561.92. 70% of that is $241,893.34. Um, the agreement puts in place, uh, we'll define what those improvements are, as I just, just discussed. Um, establish that amount of offsets, that $241,000 number, and sets a timeline for completion of the improvements and for the reimbursements. Uh, again, we would uh, recommend this to you. Questions for Kevin on this? <coughs> Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D is appointment of one member of the Sister City Committee to fill an unexpired term ending in 2022. We had two people apply, Tiffany Lawson and Jonathan Wright. Um, I got a text message from Tiffany Lawson that um, she was withdrawing her application that she just felt like at this point she doesn't have the time to put in and I think we all know um, how much time that board takes. So Jonathan Wright is our only applicant and that is an appointment made by the mayor and confirmed by the council. Is that correct, Jeff? That is correct. Okay, I'm sorry. I know I asked you that at the beginning of the meeting, but it's been a long meeting. Um, so I will appoint Jonathan Wright. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Jonathan. Um, someone will be getting in touch with you to let you know the next steps. We'll get with Jerry. Jerry will... We'll, we'll talk and if okay. we call out to do it or something, we can do that. Got it. Sounds like you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Mayor. That just sounds like Jerry's doing it. <laughs> no, we'll handle it however, <laughs> we'll handle it however <laughs> short request. We can do it from the administration. However, Mr. Short request. If, if he wants the administration to handle it, we will. Or, or if he wants gotcha. to do it. Gotcha. Okay. He'll okay. bring you to the meeting. Okay. Um, we do have an item under other. It's approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a change order number two with Sessions Paving Company relative to the Weekly Lane Swan Drive intersection project. Mayor and Council, uh, this change order is for the extra asphalt mix that was needed to meet the needs of the paving plans and distressed pavement areas, uh, the concrete business drive out there, and the removal of pay items not necessary to be utilized. This is just a over under change order for TDOT to close the project out. This project's been a long time coming to close out, it seems like. They take as long to close out as they do to get started. There it's you a lot go. of paperwork on each end. Um, any questions? Do we have a motion? So move. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, status reports, Brian? Nothing this evening. Okay, we'll move on to announcements. Miss Diane? Nothing. Nothing? It's a three hour meeting, almost it's, enough it's for you. We've not had one of these in a long time. Where was it? It's, it's getting close Where to my bedtime. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Brian? Yes, Mayor and Council, I just have a couple of things very quickly. I received a couple of emails that I want to make you aware of. Uh, one came from uh, Miss Ellen Grassman, and she just wanted to say thank you to the Smyrna Police Department, the paramedics, ambulance drivers that helped her brother 
uh, when he was in a, a serious situation here in the town and uh, everybody was very pleasant, helped them, spoke to them uh, clearly and, and got, got everything taken care of and she was just very thankful that we were there to take care of her brother in his time of need. The last one I have is a, uh, an email, a conversation I had with a man uh, that it's just moved uh, from the Lone Star State, as he put it, to the TriStar State. And he is a uh, new resident here in Smyrna, uh, living in the Sterling Apartments. Uh, he and his wife have uh, always uh, prided themselves on being part of their community. He's looking forward to getting involved in our community. Uh, but one of the things they very high on is do something good and do something right. Uh, in their move, they realized that they had a large television, uh, I think it was a 55-inch television, that uh, did not fit in their new apartment. And they called and wanted to donate it to our fire department. So uh, in conversation with the chief, we were able to take possession of that donation, and we thank Mr. Uh, Switzer and his wife for making that donation. And I think the uh, uh, television is actually going to be used at our training center uh, to keep us from having to buy one for the training center. So we very much Great. appreciate them. Nice of that couple. Yes. Nice That's all I have there. Um, any questions for Brian? Thank you, sir. Jeffrey L. The only thing I will say is today is my uh, oldest daughter's uh, birthday. She's 28 years old. So uh, You're happy, old. happy birthday to her. She has my only granddaughter. So there you go. Probably seen her on Facebook. We see her as or much Jack. as we see Jack's. <coughs> and the drone. Jack has uh, his own page. Uh, questions for Jeff? Raquel? Um, to Mr. and Mrs. Switzer, thank you for your donation and welcome to the town of Smyrna. Um, I also heard on the meeting for planning that, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, if Traley is going to be resigning. So I also I would like to say uh, thank you for all of your service um, on the planning commission, and um, uh, I didn't want to let that go without saying something about right. that. And lastly, I know we're back to school, whether it's virtual, on ground. Um, However, parents are choosing to send their children back to school. I would just like to uh, say that I will be praying for the students, the teachers, and the administrators during this time. I actually am going to be one of those as well because Gabriel's going into seventh grade, so we're getting ready for school to start too. And I know it's kind of a it's it's a hectic and stressful process for most. Yeah. So, great, thanks, HG. I'll make it very simple tonight. Be kind and shop local. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> Shame, shame. <laughs> um, Tim? Nothing tonight. Jerry? Just one thing. Uh, my thoughts and, uh, and prayers go out to uh, Miss Dot Mullins. Uh, and uh, she fell, broke her hip, and um, they're having trouble. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be able to do surgery or not, but uh, just uh, keep her and, and Robert, uh, former mayor. Uh, in, your, in your prayers. Great. Yeah. Um, only thing is uh, keep uh, those serving in our armed forces in your prayers. Um, my son is serving and um, some of you may have seen the story, some of you may not. There was a Marine Corps accident uh, right off Camp Pendleton, San Clemente Island, um, where eight Marines have perished and they did recover their bodies, which is great. But um, uh, even in times of training and times of uh, peace, it's a dangerous job. So just keep them in your prayers. Mark. Speaking of which, Officer Cole Lewis from our Smyrna Police Department has been deployed for 13 months, and we have a total of four officers now serving. And so I just want to thank them for their service, as well as your son and all the Marines you just mentioned, prayers for their families. Uh, Raquel's already touched on the teachers and the staff. I have a wife that's involved in that, and it is stressful. And and so uh, not just the staff, but the, the parents, <laughs> stressful for them too, and all the students. You know, they're probably a little confused at certain ages as to why they're not going back to school and so forth. So just think of our teachers and all those people that are applied to our educational system. There's a lot going on. I want to say a personal thank you to Robert Culp. I don't know if he's back there or not, but Robert fixed my computer today. <laughs> Thank you, Robert, and uh, Kathy and Brett. They did some filming this week for Council Corner videos, and great job. They, uh, they always do, so I want to thank them. They're probably in the sound room. 
Last but not least, I have formulated my United Way scramble team, and we are fearsome. I'm telling you, I have. You forgot I'm going to play with the cheater. I know who you're So, okay. <laughs> He's born to H.G. He's yeah. not born to me. So I've got I've got Brian Hercules. Y'all got it. Y'all got a great chance to win the last flight. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we don't we don't lose. It, that's his point. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that, uh, Brian and HG. If Jeff Craig wants to myself this, you're and the mayor. To create a mayor's flight I'm, just so they can win. I'm told that <laughs> the mayor's cup. <come. laughs> I'm told that none of them play, <laughs> and I'm a, and I'm a testament to that. So. It's going to be a heavy load, but I'm going to try to carry this, okay? But you have to admit, we do have a good time. We have a blast, and I'm looking forward yeah. to it. So. And it's for a great cause. And that's all I have. I, there, so. I, just to add on to that, I, I've been playing the Smyrna Golf Course at least once a week for pretty much the whole summer, uh, ever since it reopened. And I'm just going to tell you, it is in the best condition that I have seen it in years. The grass has grown in very well this year because of the combination of heat and rain. The greens are great. On it for a while. The greens are great. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, if you if you want to play um, probably the best value in the Middle Tennessee area, sign up for United oh. Way. Come play the golf tournament. The Smyrna Golf Course is in the best shape it's been in a long time. Well, HG and I both have been virtually practicing. Mm -hmm. Virtually and so, <laughs> yes, we've been virtually <laughs> practicing. Against each other? You <laughs> got a golf thing going so, on? How um, does that work? She's so, got a we play on the Wii. Yeah, we play on the Wii. Um, <laughs> this is a returning team, by the way. The, by the only, way, the only addition is Mr. Peach usually plays. He couldn't, and we asked Brian. But so retired my jersey. He retired. So this is a, this is a returning team. This is a this whole thing's been we've been doing this for years. How, how did y'all how did y'all do last time y'all played? I asked her. She kept we score. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep score, you keep score because you won't let me keep score. Uh, to HG's point, highest if highest score wins, then you have to finish first. There is some ethics involved. Just so you know, there's some ethics involved. HG is just jealous. He's jealous. No, I'm, I'm, just, he's just jealous. I'm just getting ganged up on because there's at least two cheaters on okay. this team. <laughs> Brian? I walked the whole 3.6 miles. Um, oh, I anything? forgot about that. I <laughs> that was my reference. Yeah. Anything else? No, Mayor, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a couple of items. Um, I hope we have the slides. There we go. So um, I hate to say that our barbecue fest that was scheduled for August the 15th um, has been canceled. We do look forward to um, next year for the event, um, and we hate having to do it, but for the safety of our citizens, we feel that it is the best decision to be made. Next is um, complete your census and help shape the future of Smyrna. If you have not filled out your census, please make sure you do it. It is so easy. You can go online. You can call in. You can... Mail or somebody, in yeah. or somebody, or somebody will knock, will on, knock your on your door, which I think I saw today that is getting ready to start yeah, taking place. Yes. So, something that was amazing to me is that I kept getting uh, things in the mail over and over and over. So finally, I sent it in, and it all stopped. Stopped. I can't okay. imagine if they're still sending. But it's not. Hadn't. It's not difficult to oh, go no, online. No. It was online. Easy. It took me three or four minutes. But right. remember, it is every person in your in household, the, everybody in the house. So, um, and Rex. Tell me again how much that equates to for every citizen for us. Estimate. Just throw a number out there. We don't. Just <laughs> <laughs> one. Just make it up. <laughs> for every citizen, and I'm thinking back. You kind of put me on the spot. Sorry. Again. Uh, <laughs> I think it's about 115 dollars. Okay. Are you sure? It's worth that. Did you, Mary? No. I think it's six. I think it's more like a thousand something. Are you? Sure? Am I putting you on the spot? That's all the federal dollars. And everything. All the federal, yes, is education, education for everything. But our portion is about 115. State. State. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so important to get your census filled out and get it turned in. Next is I think I have one more. Yep. HC, you want to talk about this one? What is there to say? Everybody understands that uh, the the events are have have, have been canceled for this year. Um, we're looking at bringing it back bigger and stronger next year, as most I think all of our events that uh, have been canceled this year 
we have plans for. Um, we, uh, <coughs> SIMA has considered another spring event. Let me just throw that out there and say more will be revealed. Great. A um, couple of items. I was not here last month. Um, for those of you who don't know, I own a teacher supply store and it was quite busy. Um, which I'm grateful for, um, but I also wanted to thank Ed Davenport and Trey Lee for their service on the Planning Commission. It is um, a really important board here to the town of Smyrna, and I appreciate all um, the years of their service and the hours put in. Uh, Tim Slate is going to replace uh, Ed Davenport, and I have spoken to someone about replacement for Trey Lee. And if this individual accepts, I think you all will be um, excited about um, this individual. Hopefully I will know um, by the workshop. Um, want to also say to the teachers out there, um, we are thinking about you, we are supporting you, we are behind you. That also goes for all of the staff that make teachers be able to do what they can do in the classroom, whether it's the bus drivers, the administration, the EAs, the cafeteria workers, every individual that is involved in educating our students. I will tell you over the last couple of weeks, I cannot, um, you cannot imagine the stress level that these parents as well as these teachers are feeling. It is changing on a daily basis and their love is our students and um, that goes for the parents as well as for the teachers in the classroom and they want some normalcy and they want to um, be able to educate our children so be patient with them have some grace with them um, remember it's a stressful time for all of us last is on a personal note mom and daddy's anniversary is tomorrow night my sister told me and um, they actually went out to dinner tonight, but um, I think I have this right, that it will be their 53rd wedding anniversary tomorrow. So happy anniversary to them. And Leanne, I think you're in charge of the gift this year. So um, anything else to come before the board tonight? Nothing else, we're adjourned. <laughs>